Okay. Uh, good morning, friends. Welcome back to Data Science Course being conducted by 360 Digital. So uh, now we are looking into Python module. So we have started looking into Python module. So in the last session, we have started with introduction. So in your LMS, you'll have these folders. So you'll be having these are the different modules we are going. Okay, so we'll start with introduction. So we have seen data types, right? Then today we'll be looking into conditional statements and functions, and we'll try to work on exception. Okay, so then we have uh, regular expressions, the libraries that we are going to work on. Data analytics will be our last week, and we'll be looking into database. So we'll have an introduction on database connectivity. Once we complete our DBMS, okay, then again we'll be looking into database connectivity. Okay. Right. So uh, that's the agenda. Okay. I hope you have these folders. Each topic. You can find the study material here. Okay, these are the different uh, options you should be having. Okay, assignments and quiz questions. And <clears throat> everybody has to complete your quiz questions. Okay, that is uh, mandatory. Okay, you have to work on your quiz questions. As we complete our topic, so try to finish your quiz questions. Okay, and along with assignments. So if you click on study material, you will be having an assignment problem statement. Okay, so we have to download the statement okay then you need to submit your assignment in your assignments form okay so it depends on your assignment so maybe if you if it is only a theoretical part you are going to submit only a word file and if you are working on practical assignment you have to submit a python okay you have to work on your python and you have to work on your program then that will be some okay so for each and every topic you will be finding these folders okay study material Assignments and this. Okay. So, apart from that, all recordings we have provided up front. Okay. You can find the recordings here. Okay. If there are any doubts, okay, you can, you can again. So, what we recommend you to, uh, so whatever is happening in our sessions, okay, again, go through the recorded videos and work on your assignments. That will be complete uh, learning. Okay? So, that will be solution from our. So uh, that is uh, one thing, and there is a quick update. Like, uh, yeah. So in your LMS, uh, so the training scheduler, okay, this has been updated to you. So complete starting to end of your schedule for your practical data science and deployment specialist. This is the program, okay. So for this program. Every every schedule, everything has been provided in training scheduler. Okay, you can click on it. You can see the complete 12 months program. If there are any changes that are happening, so mostly there will not be any changes. Okay, it will be going in uh, according to the schedule. If there are any changes, you will be finding those changes in your training scheduler. Okay, so it has been updated to you in your LMS. Okay, so you can click on that. You can see the complete schedule. What is going to happen? Okay, so that's a quick update. So everybody has to remember and please regularly check your training schedule. Okay. I hope uh, I am clear with that. So, uh, as I have shown you earlier, okay, so we have our website okay if you go to our website you can find mine so it gives a quick review of all different topics that we are covering okay so if you go to 
we have all these topics okay we have you can you can go through any of these topics here so now we are working on python programming fundamental so basically now we are working on python so here you have a mind you can see these are the different topics that we are going to cover okay if you just double click on it right so you can see each and every topic again will be divided into subtopics okay every topic any topic you take so we have all these are different subtopics so it is very very easy way to remember all these topics okay so either now while we are learning in our learning process or when you are attending your interviews also so it will be very very easy way to remember all these topics okay so what we suggest you to do is every day every day 10 to 20 minutes please sit on this mind okay either in any topic now we are working on python so you'll be working on python every day 20 minutes on the python mind map okay from there uh, when we are working on sql again you'll be concentrating on sql so we have a mind map there. so you can go, get into that okay so uh, if you remember in the last session that we have started okay so we have started with the history right so who developed python right that was uh, so that is something we have seen so friends who developed python yeah yes uh you can unmute yourself or you can put a message yeah exactly right glad over so he's the person uh, he's a Dutch programmer who developed Python. Okay, so uh, from in in the year around 1989, and after that in 1991, it was first released to the public. Okay, so now everybody can anybody anybody can download and anybody can install and you can work. So how the name has come? Right, we have seen the in in the history. So. Uh, it's it's a it's a circus it's a circus that is named as monty python's flying circus so that was an inspiration he liked he liked that particular circus and he named it after that okay so that that's uh, that's something behind uh, the name python okay there is no specific case okay? so uh, so he has named it after that then we have looked into different features okay why we need to use python Right. So there are different features that, that are listed here. So definitely, uh, so when we take the order here, there is no specific order we can follow. Okay. So any, any feature we can take in common and we can work. So now, what is a general purpose? language? Yeah. Why do we call Python as a general purpose language? Yeah, friends. Any idea? We have discussed this. Yes. You can unmute yourself or we have a chat box. You can put your answers in your chat box. Why do we call it as a general purpose language? What are the applications of Python? Any idea? Yes. Mm, not exactly. Yeah, it is easy to use. Definitely that is easy to use, but this point does not uh, fit here. Okay. So what are the applications of Python? Any idea? Why do we use Python? Yeah, friends. Yeah, you can wide range of libraries. Exactly. Okay. So these are all whatever you are saying. These are features of Python. Yeah, that's correct. These are different features of Python. Now we are looking into one feature that is general purpose. Okay. Why do we call it as a general purpose language? So it is called as general purpose language because we can use uh, Python to develop different applications, right? Uh, uh, right from uh, what we are using now for our data science, right? For machine learning, for building a machine learning application. Uh, and along with that, we'll be using it for AI applications, data analytics, right? So web development, game development, right? Gaming application development, right? And database connectivity desktop application for creating desktop application you can see there are there are there are a wide range of applications <clears throat> okay and as i have shown last week we have installed 
uh, if you go to python.org, if you go to the different features and different applications, you can you can see a huge list of different fields, different domains where we are in Python. Just go through that website, you'll find a lot of information. There. Okay. So Python is a general purpose language because it can be used for different applications. So what is the difference? Okay, if, if I take something like SQL, okay, structured query language, okay, we'll be looking into database, database management, what is RDBMS, SQL, right? So when we take SQL, it is very specific, right? It is specific to database, right? While we are managing a database, we need a programming language to interact with the database. So there we are going to use something called as SQL. <clears throat> so SQL, can we use SQL for machine learning models? No, I cannot use SQL for building a website. It's not, it's not possible, right? So that is very specific, right? So in the same way, we have HTML and other, other programming languages, which are very specific to uh, uh, some domain. Okay. But Python is a general purpose language. So there are multiple, multiple applications. Okay. So that is general purpose language. Then it is an open source. So what is an open source, right? So we all have installed, right? right? So we haven't paid anything. It's a free source. So it is a open source. Okay, Python is a open source. So anybody can. Yeah, so anybody, anybody can uh, install Python. Anybody can work on Python, right? And we, any and there is a huge, uh, huge base of uh, programmers who are working, who are interested. Anybody can work on uh, scaling up. That means. Today we have a version. Today we have a version of 1.1 of a specific library. So tomorrow we'll be having a 1.2 version. So in that particular library, there are certain functions. Maybe there might be more functions. So who is going to add them? So there's a huge community of all these developers who are contributing to this particular open. Right? So these are uh, so the, the so the the this makes uh, Python is very special. Right, always all or it is it is scalable. Okay, so there are more and more libraries are coming up. There are more and more functions are coming up, making it very easy to use. Right, so the functionality becomes very very easy when we have all these different built-in functions. Right, so that is why we uh, we we tend to use Python like this. Okay, so right in in lot of uh, programs that we are working. So now, uh, yes, it is uh, interpreted uh, interpreted versus compiled. So what we have seen in the last, uh, so when, when we compare, okay, when we take, generally what happens when we write a source code, right, whatever code you're writing, we call it as a source code, <clears throat> right? So source code or program, we can say it as a program, right? You are going to write certain program. That program has to be compiled. Right, the first step will be happening. So that is compilation. So when it is compiled, so we have something called as byte code. It's an intermediary code. It, it is an intermediary code uh, between the, so we have the machine, the machine code, okay, between machine code and source code, the byte code is an intermediate code. And this will be interpreted by interpreter. Okay, interpreter, and this we call it as Python virtual machine. So here we have something called as Python virtual machine. From there, this will be converted into binary code. So basically, bytecode is a low low level uh, code that we have, and binary code is the lowest level. Code. So this will be understood by CP, the central processing unit. So it will be in zeros. Okay, binary format, okay, zeros and ones. Okay. So this will be ultimately provided uh, provides us the output. So that's the basic process that we are going to see when you are when you have written the program and when it is being compiled. Okay, first the compilation, then interpretation. So we have okay, we have both inter. It is it is uh, the Python that we are looking here it is the best example of interpreted language. Okay, when it, when it comes to compilation. Java would be taken as very good example. So what happens to interpreted uh, programming language? So directly, directly the code is written in such a way that, uh, so without compilation, directly it can interpret the code and it can convert that into binary code. And finally we get the, 
So this step that we are seeing here, that can be skipped when it comes to interpretations. Okay, so these are certain, certain uh, technical aspects. Okay, when when uh, you are writing a code, how the code is being compiled and interpreted, and finally how you are you are getting your output. Okay. So there are uh, like we have it is an interactive. Okay, so it is an interactive language. So it is interactive programming is the procedure of writing parts of program while it is already active. Okay, and the scripting we have. Right, we have it is a dynamic programming. We have seen that while we are writing our program, okay, already we have started working on program part. So we have seen that when we are assigning a variable, right? When we are when we are assigning a variable, uh, the the value could be anything, any any of data type. So we are not providing the specific uh, data type there. Automatically, Python will recognize. Automatically, Python will recognize. So it is a dynamic programming. Okay, so the program is dynamically returned. Okay, so it is object oriented programming, right? We have seen that it is object oriented programming and functional oriented programming. So what is object oriented in simple? So we write a program for a specific data. A logic will be written for a specific data, logic or function, okay? So here in case of functional oriented programming, so we, we can use, okay, we can use a logic for any data for different okay so that's a basic uh, difference that we in simple okay so when it comes to object oriented program object is nothing but data okay so the logic or function that we are going to write that will be very specific to this particular data but in case of functional oriented programming language so a logic can be used okay single logic that can that is written can be used for different objects okay so that's the basic uh, so uh, along with that we have like uh, shell scripting modular programming right and uh, when it comes to os independent yes it is os independent either it is mac linux or it is windows we can write the program and the same program can be used in any of this right i can i can just share the program file and i can run it in either mac either linux the program will not change so it is compatible to all these different operating systems it's a high level english like uh, language easy to read write maintain right so we have very rich uh, rich libraries we have here right and uh, it it has database connect right basically basically when we see when we compare the other programming languages like c c++ we do not have the database connect <clears throat> okay so now when when we have java and python here we have database connect that means if <clears throat> so if there is a data in database right so we have some data in database and i want to work on this specific, uh, this specific data so what i want to do so i will be using this data for <clears throat> data analysis and machine learning and i have to build a machine learning model so i have to pull this data from this particular database to python so there should be certain connectivity should be there between Python and maybe if I am using SQL, right? These uh, database and the programming language. So I need to take the data from that particular database. I need to use. It. We will be looking into all sorry database. Connect. So that is possible with Python. Yes, we can we can uh, we can directly connect to the uh, database and we can get the data. Yeah, that is possible. So these are different features that we have. Okay, these are the different features of python and uh, so why we are we are why we are tending to use python program <laughs> okay so uh, what is an id integrated development environment any idea yeah friends what is id So last time we have done uh, installation, right? So after installation, uh, so what is the what is that ID we have used? What are the different IDs we have used? Yeah, friends. Yes. Yeah. What are the different IDs we have used? 
Jupyter notebook. Exactly. Right. We have used something called as Jupyter notebook along with that spider. So what are these basically? So IDE is nothing but integrated development environment. Okay. So we call it as integrated development environment. So we need to write our program. Right. Only, only when we write our program, the program will be compiled, interpreted, and finally we will be getting our output. Right. So where we have to write this program. So we have seen there are two different options. Either I can use like command prompt, the UI, something, some, something similar to command prompt that we have got from Python website right? directly. So generally, generally the developers will be using that particular thing. Okay. Uh, so we will be using, we'll be using something called as different IDs. We have different IDs. IDs are nothing but the UI, okay, the, the, which comes with a better user interface. Okay. And where we can, where we can input our program and we can get our output of program and everything is maintained very clear. Okay. Which we can see very clear. Okay. So there are different IDs. So we have uh, seen. Yes, uh, as Manchu said, we have seen Spider, Jupiter, and PyCharm. Okay, we will have uh, something called as PyCharm. So basically, as in the learning phase, we'll be looking into Spider and Jupiter. So one thing, you can use any IDE. Okay, so will Python program changes? Yeah, friends. Yeah, will 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 there be any difference in program? Yeah, exactly. Right. So there will not be any difference. So any, any, any IDE you can use, okay. Depending on your comfort. Okay. Uh, and so the program will not be changed. Okay. So, uh, currently we'll be concentrating on spider and Jupiter. Along with that, we have certain cloud based IDEs also, right? We have something called as Google Colab. Okay. So which comes from Google server, okay. Which is connected to Google server. So when, when we say cloud based IDEs. So these should be, these, these will be working only on, okay. We should have certain, uh, internet, uh, internet connectivity so that we could connect to these servers. But when it comes to the IDEs that we are seeing here, spider, Jupiter and PyCharm, these can be worked offline also. Okay. So these will be, you are going to work on offline. So when, but when it comes to cloud-based IDEs, there should be the, uh, the internet connect. So they are online. They are cloud based. Okay, they are they are connected to different servers. Like uh, we have Google here. Okay, from Google we are getting something called as Google Colab. In the same way, Amazon is providing something called as Amazon SageMaker Studio Lab. And we have uh, now, uh, recently there is something added, something uh, called as Python Anywhere. Okay, from we uh, from Anaconda. Right, we have we have installed the Anaconda uh, Navigator. Right, from there directly we have an IDE that is called as Python Anywhere. That means from anywhere we can use Python. So we have Kegel. So these are different cloud-based IDEs. So any, any of these IDEs you can use to write your program, to execute your program, and you can debug your program. Okay, debugging is nothing but uh, correcting. Okay, there are, there are certain syntax errors. Okay, you are, you are doing certain uh, error bugging. Okay, yeah. So uh, we have a YouTube channel 360 DSMG. Okay. So everybody, everybody try to subscribe the channel. You will be seeing, like uh, you can see here, there'll be a lot and lot of updates will be coming every week, every day. Okay. If I have to say. And you can see there are many free courses that will be updated here also. Okay, you can you can go here, you can work on them, right? You can practice, right? You can revisit your uh, topics, what you are working on, right? That you can do. Along with that, there will be several webinars will be conducted. Okay, those will be free online. 
Okay, all these details you can get only when you can, you are subscribed to the channel. Okay, so if you haven't done that, please uh, please do that and please join uh, the three sixty DSMG channel. Okay. Okay, then, uh, let us continue. Then we have seen variables, right? What are variables? Yeah, friends. Yes, what are variables? Yeah. Yes, friends. Stores data that can change. A, wait, others? Yeah, what are variables? And manipulate data. Okay. Yeah, others? We have discussed this in the last session, right? <clears throat> okay. So variables. Variables are nothing but memory pointers. Okay, variables are nothing but memory pointers. So where we can store certain amount of information, right? So the data, the data could be in any form. Okay, that's the next thing. Okay, we'll be looking into data types there. Okay. So what are the different rules that we have? So we have seen there are certain rules when we are creating a variable. Rule is nothing but a syntax rule. Okay, whatever we are writing, okay, whatever we are writing in the format of program, we call it as a syntax. Okay, like the English language has certain grammar that we maintain. In the same way, the Python programming, so any programming language apart, okay, apart from Python, uh, Python, Python also. Okay, uh, so any any programming language will have certain syntax that is so th that has been assigned when they have developed it. So what we do as as a programmer, I am going to follow that particular syntax. If I make any mistake in that particular syntax, we will be getting something called a syntax error. Okay, we'll be looking into errors also, right? We'll be getting something as syntax. Error. So now. To avoid that, what we have to do, we have to follow the rules that are being provided. So, what are the different rules that we have in when it comes to variables? So, as we know, variable is a memory pointer. It should always start with alphabet. Okay, it should always start with alphabet. <clears throat> so, what we are going to write, for example, I am creating something called as Python. Python is equal to 100. <clears throat> so what is happening here? On your right side, whatever value you have, okay, that you are going to store in certain memory location, okay, and that is named as Python. Okay, that is named as Python. So it could be anything, okay. As we are saying, it is a variable. Variable could be anything, and that can change, right? Variable and constant, we know, right? So when we have learned, so generally uh, constant is something will not change, but variable is changeable. That will change, right? So Python is a variable. You can you can Python is a variable. You can write there anything. So what we have to understand here, so there is a value, there is a value that is there that we are trying to store in that particular memory location, and we are naming that memory location as Python, right? So we call it as we also call it as identifier, right? Variable is also called as identifier. Right? It identifies that particular location. Right? So, what is the rule here? What are the different rules that we have seen? So, always it should start with alphabet. Okay? Always it should start with alphabet. So, if it do not start with alphabet, what will happen? That will lead to syntax. Okay? So, in this example, yes, it has started with alphabet. Python. So P is an alphabet. So from there, uh, can be alphanumeric. What is alphanumeric, friends? Yeah, what is alphanumeric? Any idea? It contains both numeric value as well as alphabet. Right. For example, if I'm writing uh, nine. 
Python. So it's an alpha numeric. I have both numeric as well as alpha. So it is called as alpha numeric. Yes. So the variable can be alpha numeric, but will this work? Yeah. Can I use this variable? So definitely not. Yes. Right. So what is the rule? What is the first rule that we have seen? It should start with only alpha value. It cannot start with numeric value. Right. That's the first rule that we have seen. So yes, definitely it's not weak. Right. Alpha numeric. So it can, how it can be alpha numeric? Yes. There are certain special characters we can use, but only one special character. Sorry. We can use only one special character that is underscore. So I can write it as Python underscore nine. That will work. I can use only one special character that is Python underscore. So I can, I, I can use it. Okay. So underscore can be used at the beginning also, but these are called as special variables. Okay. We will not, we will not be looking into special variables, but there are, there are certain variables called as special variables. So special variables will start from underscore. Okay. So generally we do not start from underscore. So we start from alphabet. Okay. And if I want to, if I want to have a numeric value, so I can use a underscore also, or directly also, I can, I can say Python line that will also work. Right. So these are certain rules that we have, and it cannot start with numbers. Exactly. And case sensitive. So that means if I am using P caps, okay. And I am using Python. So next time I can use the same word. Okay. I can use the same word. I can keep P as a smaller value. Okay. Smaller case letter. Then I can use Python. Again. So it recognizes, okay. It recognizes this as a different case and this as a different. So Python has capability to recognize the case, right? It will not consider both as same, right? It, it, it will recognize the case. Right. So I can, I can, I can, I can use the same keyword. I can use the same word, many number of times. Okay. But I need to, I can, I can change it. I can change uh, the let, I can change the alphabets uh, based on the case. Okay. And uh, the final rule that we have seen cannot have built in keywords. Yes. Right. So we cannot have built in keywords. That means what are built in keywords? So they, while while we are developing the program here, okay, when when they have developed the program here, so they have used certain keywords, okay, while creating, okay, different uh, components uh, that that are included in this program. So these keywords are predefined or yes, are very specific to that particular function, that operation. So I cannot use them again, right? So what we are going to do? So there are certain, there is a list of keywords, right? Maybe like 20 to 30 keywords are present. So that keywords we cannot use. Apart from that, we can, we can use any keyword. We can use any keyword or any, any word for our variable creation. Okay. How do you know that? So here you can see, we also have provided the code. Okay. In mind map, you can see, we also have provided code. Okay, it is very useful. You have to click. Okay, you have to you have to look into your mind map. Every day. So why we are using this particular? What is import keyword does? Remember, what is keyword here? It's a library, right? So we are importing a library. Inside that library, there are different functions. So keyword list is a function. K W list is a function. So from this library, I am calling this particular function. What does, what does this function do? It will give me the list of all built-in keywords, right? It will give me the list of all built-in keywords. So we will try to remember. Them. Okay. There are like 20 to 30 keywords. Try to remember. Okay. So when I'm creating, so I will not be using them. Okay. Apart from them, I'll be using any other key. Okay. So we'll be getting into local variables and uh, global variables concept. Okay, we'll see that. Right. Uh, so up to that part we have seen. Along with that we have seen operators. So what are the different operators we have? Yeah, friends. 
Remember what are the different operators we have? Assignment, okay. We have got one operator. Yes, others. Yes, assignment. Logical. Arithmetic. Okay. Membership. Yeah. Yes. Arithmetic assignment. What about comparison operator? Remember? Yes, yeah. We have comparison operator and bitwise operator. Exactly. Yeah, we have bitwise operator comparison. So what happens in arithmetic operator? So what are basically operators? Remember? What are operators? Yeah. Friends, what are operators? I am saying A is equal to 1. What is equal to here? Okay. Which performs operations on operands used to perform mathematical operations. Okay. So what, what do we have here? What is this? Equal to, right? So it's a symbol. Yes or no? It's a symbol. So operators are special symbols. Okay. Operators are special symbols that we use to build the logic. Okay. We are going to build the logic, right? Whatever the logic may be. So A plus B is a logic, right? A plus B, A minus B, right? A, A divided by B, all these are different mathematical operations, right? If I want to perform a mathematical operations, I need certain special symbols, yes or no, right? So from where I am getting these special symbols, we have something called as arithmetic operator, right? So these, these operators are very important while you are building your uh, logic, okay? So when it comes to arithmetic operators, yeah, we have plus, minus, and we have a asterisk symbol, okay, for multiplication and division, okay. So these are four different symbols that we already know. So what about this? What do we call this symbol? Yeah, we have, yeah, what is the symbol? What do we call that? Yeah, friends, what do we call that symbol? Because these symbols we already know, right? Yeah, exactly. Flow division. That is called as floor division. Okay. So what about this second next one? What is this symbol is? What do we call that? Yeah, what is the symbol is? Modulus. Exactly. Right. So we call it as okay. So if I use double asterisk, what is that? Yeah. To the power of, exactly. So we call it as exponential. Exponential, right? So these are three different arithmetic, okay, arithmetic operators that we have. So why do we use flow division? Yeah, friends. Yeah. Why do we use flow division? Yes. What are the applications? Right. So we use, we have flow division, we have modulus, we have exponential. Okay. So exponential, yes, to the power of, right. If I am using exponential, if I want to get the, to the power of some value, okay, I'm going to use exponential, right. To the power of, to the power, uh, two to the power of five, right. I'm going to use exponential, right. So what about modulus and flow division? What are the applications? Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember? So what is the output you are going to get? If I am if I am writing something like uh, maybe 
uh, 10 and uh, 2 to perform integer division okay okay what what will be the output how the output will be division of a first operand by second operand so if i'm giving if i'm dividing 20 by 2 yes we are going to get the remainder okay so that is one thing what about modulus? <clears throat> so the difference is, okay. So when it comes to flow division, we get the quotient value, right? How the quotient value will be there. So in the second position here, when I'm using modulus, I will be getting a reminder. It, remi it, get, it returns a reminder. Okay, so for example, if I take 20 flow division 10, okay, so I'll be getting the question value as 2, right? If I am getting something like uh, 2.4, okay, so now what will happen? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, exactly. So that will give me the nearest integer value. so if whatever decimal value we are getting that will be converted to integer so if the, if i am saying integer so 2 is also an integer 3 is also an integer so we will be getting the nearest and the lowest value whatever whatever the nearest value we have that value i am going to get as a so i'll be getting as 2 right so these are certain symbols that we need to remember and these symbols will be using when we are working on our program. So in the same way, we have comparison operators. So what will be the output here in this case? <coughs> yeah. What will be the output in this case? If I'm using these comparison operators. Yeah, exactly. So if I'm saying double equal to, I'm trying to compare some. Right, is A is exactly equal to B. So the output will be either true or false. Right, so the output will be either true or false. So what about the second symbol here? If I use exclamation and equal to, what does that mean? Yeah, friends, on it. Not equal to, right, that, that is, that is, uh, that symbol is not equal to so then we have greater than less than greater than or equal to greater or less than or equal to. in all these cases the output will be either true or false clear right so we will be using all these okay we'll be using all these different operators so the 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 logic could be anything right the logic could be anything we will be we will be using all these different operators to complete that logic and to get an output Okay, so these are special symbols. Okay, all all these are special symbols. So then we have uh, assignment operators, right? So equal to plus or equal to minus or equal to. <clears throat> so if I'm saying a plus or equal to b, what does it mean? What will be the uh, result there? If I'm saying a plus or equal to b. Yes, exactly. A is equal to A plus B. Right. Yeah, exactly. So in all these cases, okay, whatever you take, okay, in all these symbols you are seeing here. So if I am using either plus or equal to, minus or equal to, asterisk or equal to, either you divide. Okay. So the result, whatever you are getting, if I am using, if I am saying A minus or equal to B means a is equal to a minus b, right? So that's the output you have to get. So equal to, yes, we have seen. It's an assignment. Operator. So when we are using variables, right? A is equal to 10. That's an assignment operator that we have used. Then we have logical operators and or not. Okay, we have seen certain examples here. 
Okay. In the same way, we have identity operators, is, is not. Then we have membership operators in not. So mostly we will be using these operators when we are working on our programming. Along with that, we also have bitwise operators. Okay. So these are different operators that we have seen in the last session. Okay. So if I remember, we have completed up to this and we have looked into data. Types. Okay. So what are the different data types we have? Yeah, friends, what are different data types we have? Remember? Okay. Numeric. List, tuple, set, dictionary. Okay. If I say, uh, we have sequential, right? We have sequential data types. So in sequential data types, what do we have? If we are very specific. Yeah, we have Boolean. Yes, exactly. So we have Boolean data. So in sequential, we have, yes, list, tuple, and string. So we have list, tuple, and string in sequential data. Okay. In numeric, okay, numeric is again divided into three. What are they? Three data types. Yeah, friends, numeric is again divided into three data. What are they? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Right. So integer, float, and complex. Right. So along with that, we have two more data types. Okay. So one is dictionary and the other is we have set. Okay. Now we'll be looking into how we are going to work on all these different. Data. So what, what are the different uh, functions we have? Okay. What are the different uh, inbuilt functions that are associated with each and every data type? Okay. That will be looking. Okay, let's continue with the programming part. So what you are going to do, you are going to uh, download this particular study material. Okay, we have a Python code here. Okay, I hope you have downloaded it. Okay, if not, please download it. So data types, variables, okay, that's the module we are working on. So you have to download Python code. Okay, so it will be in zip format. You have to unzip it. Okay, so that's a file. Okay. I'm going to just copy that onto my desktop. I'm going to work. So I already have the file. Right, so that's a file. So you can you can maintain a folder Python and you can keep you can add all these uh, folders to that particular file. Okay, so you can maintain a separate folder for your uh, study material and you can maintain a separate folder for your assignment so that it will be very clear for you for each of your module. Okay, now we are working on Python again. We'll be working on SQL next. Right, so it will be easy to understand. So. Uh, I have dot py extension. So which ID you have to use? Yeah, friends, remember I have dot py extension. So which ID I have to use? Okay. So what happens if I use uh, Jupyter? It will give me only read only mode. Okay, I can I can read what is the code we have, but I cannot run it. Okay, so dot py extension I can use only for spider. Okay, uh, what about so which format can be used in Jupyter? How the how the extension should be? Remember? Yeah, right. Dot ipyn. So the extension should be 
dot i p y n b okay if you have an extension this way you are going to use this in jupyter jupyter notebook okay or you can use the same thing in google colab same file can be used in google colab also clear right so currently we have dot py so i am going to use spider okay let me open spider everybody please open spider so that you can run along with me you can run the program along with me yeah Okay. It's a time. So we'll have a short break and we'll come back. Okay, we'll come back by eight five. Okay, and then we'll start uh, working on our program. Okay. So meanwhile, everybody has to open Spider. Okay. so uh before going to break i would like to show you once again right so we have the 360 digit mg right so that's the channel that we have okay uh so everybody everybody try to install in uh, subscribe this particular channel okay you'll be getting regular updates on our uh, programs okay uh, the free courses that we are going to provide along with that there will be many webinars will be going on okay you can go through all of them along with that you can follow the success stories okay you, you can see the success stories uh, that that are being conducted by mr barney so you can see the animated videos right python programming deployment models a discussion forum that will be happening every week okay it's a webinar free webinar right so you can see all these are different uh, deployment models that have been discussed so please please subscribe to our uh, channel okay let's have a break and come back okay and uh, we'll see this
Okay. Uh, let us restart the session. So uh, the UI that you are looking here, this is spider. Okay, we have seen this in the last session, right? On the left side, this is editing pane where you can write your program and you can edit. On your right side, on the down, you can see this here you have the output. That's the output pane you have. And on top, you can see there are different options. We have help, variable explorer, plots, and files. Okay. So whatever variable we are going to create, that we can explore here. We can, if I want to look more into that particular variable, the details of that particular variable will be provided here. Okay. And we will be working on different functions. Okay. If I don't know anything about any function, I can check with help. Okay. So spider has provided an option with help. There we can check. And we will be working on graphical representations. So if I want to look into the plot, so I, I will be getting plots here. So by clicking on plots, I can see what are the different plots I have. I can see here. Okay. So along with that, I can access into my files directly from here. So when you click on file here, from file, you have a drop down where you can see open, right? You can click on open. And wherever you have saved your file, okay, I have saved it on desktop. And the file name, it's available and all. So I am taking this one. Huh? Everybody try to do it along with me. Okay. Try to run the program. And the best suggestion would, should be like uh, writing the program. Okay. So what I want, uh, you can create one more session here. Okay. So you can have here, uh, you can create new file. You'll be getting untitled one dot py. Okay. It's an empty page. Okay. You can write the program from here. Okay, you can you can start writing a new program from here. So the best solution, so take a new page and start writing your program. So whatever you are seeing here, try to write. Okay, writing is the best way to, uh, to learn Python. Okay. Okay. Uh, we are looking into different uh, so we have, we have tried to create the variables here, right? There we have seen what are the different rules that we have in variables. We are looking into different data type. We have strings, list, tuple, mapping, set types. Okay. Along with that, we have uh, integer, float, complex number. All these are different data types. So how to create a variable, right? So what we are going to do, I'm going to just a is equal to 10. So what is happening now? So did I give any, any uh, data type here? No, not exactly. Right. So just I have written a is equal to 10. So in this, we have used an operator, right? What is that operator? It's an assignment operator equal to so 10 is the value plus the data or information. So it could be in any form. Okay. It could be in any format. So here we are using 10. So this 10 is the value that I need to store in this particular memory location. So some memory location. Okay. And we are naming it as A. So when we run it, so how to run the program here, we can run it in spider, we can run it line by line. So here you have a button by clicking this button, you can run the program. So I'm just keeping my cursor here and just I'm running the program. You can see on my right side, you are going to get the output. Now, if I want to see what I have here, what, what this particular variable is, okay, I want, I want to explore more into my variable. So what I'm going to do, I'm going for variable explorer. So what I have here, you can see, it gives me the name of the variable, what is the type of the integer, size, and value. What is the value? 
right? The complete details of that particular variable I can see in variable explorer, right? So now uh, if I just try to create something called as Python, okay? And I am giving, and I am starting with one, right? So definitely that will give me an error. It's an invalid syntax. So when I'm, when I'm running it, I'm saying equal to 10. And when I'm running that line, so that will be an invalid syntax. So when it is valid, so when I remove that one, it is valid. So I can use special characters, that is underscore, underscore 10. Right. Now it becomes alpha numeric, right? It, this becomes alpha numeric that contains both alphabets as well as blanks, right? It's a numerical. So yes, I can run this. So there is no issue, right? I can see that there is a variable created here, which is an integer, which, which holds integer, right? And the size is here, yeah, right? So this is how we are going to create a variable. And we are following all those. Okay. So now if there are any special uh, special keywords that are already allotted, that we are not going to use. Right. So if I want to know what are the different keywords that we have, yes, there is a library import keyword. I can import it and then we'll be working on the list of keywords. You can see these are all the list of keywords. So why we are looking into this? We will not be using these keywords as variables. Okay, apart from these keywords, we will be using other words, whatever we have, that for creating variables. Space will, space will also not okay, along with special characters. So, uh, or starting from a numeric value, uh, having space will also not, right? So, automatically, you can see that there is no error here. Or I can keep a answer. It will also work for us. Okay. So, here what is happening? So, I have used a special characters. What we have, what we have seen earlier, I can use only underscore. Okay. Apart from underscore, I cannot use any other special character. Right. So, here we are using a special character. So it is showing me in a invalid sequence. Yeah, right. So here I am creating something called as car. Car is not a numeric value. So it is it is called a string here. It's a text. Okay, it, it, it is a text or different characters. It's a combination of different characters we have. So uh, it is string is a data type. Okay, and it is represented in quotation. So I am creating a string here. I'm creating a string here and I'm saving that string in new car. Right? So we can do that. So I am creating new car. Okay. Now I want to see what I have in new car. Okay. So generally, uh, see, uh, if I, if I run new car, right? if I run new car, right? Use me what I have in the same way. I can also use something called as print. Right, print is a built-in function. I am not writing any any code for print. Okay, I am using directly print. Right, so I am getting car. So if I if I want to print any value, I am going to use a built-in function or a predefined function called as print here. I am not going to write any program for this directly. I'm going to remember this particular keyword I'm going to use. So if I change P for capital P, will it work? Right, that will that will throw an error for us. Because it is it is very specific, it is case sensitive. If it is it, it is smaller case P, we have to use smaller case P. Okay, any any keyword or any function we have to maintain. So that is something important. So then we have seen certain examples. I hope you have run all this program. Okay. So let's take a flow division. Okay. Uh, I want everybody to take A is equal to one, two, five, six. 
okay and d is equal to uh, maybe 12 okay yeah so i want you to calculate everybody take to uh, take two values here okay a is equal to 1 2 5 6 and b is equal to 12 and try to calculate a floor division b and a floor division b uh, floor yeah modulus b okay yeah please everybody calculate and put your answers in your uh, chat box a floor division okay you have to do floor division and modulus for a and b values yes what you have to do first you have to create two different variables okay what is 104 can you copy the code also yeah copy the code starting from assigning everything okay assigning values and this particular code a floor division b copy everything and then give me the output yeah right so when you okay so what is output now for a floor division b if you are printing a floor division b what is output yeah friends what is output everybody yeah everybody has to do it we have kirtana we have bhumika vivek abhay it's a simple line of code right already we have the code just you have to run it that's it okay great okay so that is how we get these values we are going to use these operators so now we have looked into arithmetic operators right so along with that uh we have comparison operators right so if we take same a and b okay if i take same a and b So if I if I take uh, a is double equal to b, so what will be the output? Yeah, false. Definitely, they are not equal, right? So in the same way, if I'm saying a is greater than b, now what is input here? So the input is a is equal to one two five six, b is equal to twelve. So definitely, a is greater than b, right? Yeah, that will be. so these are comparison operators okay here we are looking into comparison operators so then we have seen assignment operators right so we are using c less or equal to b right whatever value we are getting here uh, so if i am taking then now uh, we can apply the same right let's try to take c is equal to a plus b what is the value you can take c is equal to a plus b whatever values you have taken here right so i can get the value from there if i take c plus or equal to b okay based on that what what is the value you are going to get c is equal to c plus b right the same thing will happen in all these cases right uh take uh, some values here okay let me give some values maybe A is equal to three hundred. B is equal to four uh, hundred. So these are the two values. Okay. Ah, uh, try to apply this formula. 
C asterisk or equal to B and see what is the result. <clears throat> Give me just output. That's it. Yeah, everybody try. So you are going to apply. C. Okay. So first you have to add. Okay. You have to add. So you are going to give C is equal to A plus B, right? First you are going to create one more variable from there, try to run this and give me the output. What is the output we are getting? Right? So how, how does it work here? So when I'm giving C, okay, so it should give me C is equal to Right, C is equal to C into, right, that should be the value. Yeah, so in the same way, you can, in the same way, you can take any value. So that will be in the format of, yeah. So what are these? These are assignment operators. So we have seen a simple assignment operator that is A is equal to B, right? So in the same way, we have membership operator. So what we have seen print y in Python. So wh what will be the output here in this case, in case of membership operators? Yeah, friends, what will be the output when we are using membership operators? Yeah, right. It will be in Boolean format, whether it is true or false. Okay, It will give me in Boolean format, true or false. So here in this case, I am saying P, uh, we are trying to print this and we are trying to see why is there in Python normal. So definitely I will be getting true. Right? We can check the values and it is case sensitive. Okay, you should be looking into case sensitivity also. So in the last case, I am saying P not in Python. So definitely that is. So what is the output for 250 line? P not in Python. Okay. Uh, now, if I change this to now, what is the output? Exactly. Right. So that's the difference. Okay. You can you can notice the difference uh, that way. So that means uh, the the case sensitivity is something important. Along with that, maybe if I give maybe x. <clears throat> right. If I'm saying x not in Python, so definitely x is not there in this particular string that we have created clear right so that is membership operators we have we have identity operators so we are looking for why is python is why python no right so it will check whether the left value is equal to the right value or not okay we are seeing there are two different values on my both sides so i am seeing whether the left value is equal to right so it's similar to the equal, right? So we are using y is equal to pi. I'm saying y is equal to pi. Huh? It's almost same. If I'm, if I'm just writing it as uh, maybe y is equal, equal to pi. So we are trying to be a comparison. It's almost similar. Right? In the same way, I can also write whether if I take the same here, right, we can also write it as not equal. If I use this symbol here. Right, so it's almost same. Okay. So identity operator. So I'm, I'm trying to see uh, print one is one. If it is one is one, then only uh, it will, it, it will give me a value here. Okay. So if I print this, that is saying that it is true. Yes, one is one, right? In the same way, you can compare all this values. So case sensitivity, that is very, very important here. So in this case also, we are having both are Python. These two keywords that we are seeing are Python, but when I run it, I'll be getting it as false because case sensitivity, that is something important. Clear, right? So we will be using all these different operators. Okay? When we are working on our... Uh, uh, programming, we'll be looking into all these different operators.
Chandana, do you have any doubt? You are unmute. Clear, right? Uh, are we clear up to this? Do we have any doubts? Yeah, so mostly we have done some revision here, whatever we have discussed earlier. Yeah, are we clear? Do we have any doubts? Okay. So then we have seen a concept called as precedence. Okay, what is uh, precedence of operators? Yeah. Yeah, what is precedence of operators? Remember what we have discussed earlier? Hmm, yeah. Yeah, teacher, what's the doubt? Yes, that's correct, right? T is T. That is equal to, yeah, that's a comparison, right? Right, just is not will be false. T is not T, that will be false. T is equal to T, right? So definitely that will be true. Clear, Teja? Yeah, right. So that is they, both are same, right? It, it's a comparison. It is trying to compare what we have on both sides, and it is giving you the out. Yeah? yeah. Okay. So uh, now we are looking into precedence, right? If an expression contains more than one operator, right? It can, okay, when we are writing an expression, it can contain more than one operator. So then order of evaluation depends on the order of the operations that we are going to work. For example, so what is that order? Okay, we need to remember this order. Okay, there is no other go. We need to remember this order. When we are going to use, when we are going to look into this order, so when we have multiple expressions in a single line, right? For example, I am saying, uh, so let, let us define A is equal to 100, B is equal to 200, and C is equal to 300. Okay. Now, Divide A and B. Okay, so I have okay, divide A and B and multiply the result with C. Okay. Now what will happen? What will be the result? How you are going to write it? Yeah, generally what we do. So what I am going to do is like 100 divided by 200 and it is multiplied by 300. Yeah. So what will be the output here? Do we get the right output or do we have to do something? I am using application. So now let's look into the order here. So in this order, I have first is parenthesis, second is exponentiation, third is multiplication, fourth is division, fifth is addition, and sixth is subtraction. Now, when I practically run this, what is the what is the output you are getting? Yeah. Yeah, friends. Put the output in the chat box. The same thing, whatever we are writing here. Just copy this, run it, and say what is output? 150. Okay, exactly. So now, is the correct output? For this question, okay, this is the question, right? So what I want to do, divide A and B and multiply the result with C. Is it the correct output? Yeah? Okay, I'm getting 150 here. Okay, if I remove this, what I'm getting here? 
Okay, they are getting the same. So it is taking division. Yeah, it is either way same. So that's why we are getting the same thing, right? So first it will take 300, then it will divide. So either ways we are getting the same. Thing. Uh, maybe we can change this example. Right, maybe I can take two plus three. Now, okay, just I'm going to select this and see. Uh, three zero one is my output here. Okay, now I just separate this. What I'm trying to do? So I'm I'm trying to get the precedence first. So. If I want to get these values first, okay, first I want to divide only 100 divided by 200. Whatever we are, value we are getting, that should be multiplied with this. So where we have addition here, so addition will always go to last. Okay, so when I run this, now what will be the output? Okay, so the precedence is something like, uh, Okay, let me take one more example, like uh, 100 plus 200, okay, 100 plus 200, mm, or 100 minus 200 plus 100. Okay, so when I run it, and bring zero minus hundred and present. So first, what happened here? So in this order, we have uh, addition. Okay, in this order, we have addition, then we have subtraction. So first, it will work on addition factor. Okay, based on that, it will be getting. It. So parentheses have the highest precedence and can be used to force an expression. It is an expression based on that it will be working. So exponentiation has the next highest precedence. Just I'm going to run it. I'm going to say a minus b less less. Right? When we run it, now you can see the difference. So before I have given directly values. Right? When I have given, I have given directly values here. Okay. So first, what is what is happening here? So it will work on addition factor. Okay, whatever we have that will be added, then that will be subtract. Okay, if I give only if I say, so how much is a minus b here? A minus b is hundred minus two hundred. That should be a negative value plus c. What is c here? So obviously I will be getting. Okay, yeah, right. So that is how the precedence works. Okay, we have we have seen this uh, in the last session. So now we are working on data type. So data types are very, very important. Okay. So there are different functions that we have that are related to data types. Okay. So we should be, we should be remembering these functions and we'll be using them regularly so that uh, we'll be more acquainted to all these different functions. So we have numbers, right? So again, numbers, we have three data types. Okay, integer. So we have uh, in integer, integer is nothing but a whole number such as 3, 300, 200. Right, any, any number, any, any whole, whole number value we can take, either it is negative, positive, or zero. Okay, so that is an integer. So when it comes to floating point, it is a decimal value. <clears throat> right, when, when we have the value in decimal uh, format, so we say it as a floating point. In case of complex numbers, we have an imaginary value. 2 plus 3j. Okay, j is an imaginary value. So it's a combination of real value and imaginary parts. That means here the real value is 2. 2 plus 3j. Right? When, when I write it as 2 plus 3j, 3j is an imaginary part. So if I have any value in this format, we call it as a complex number. Okay. So then we have Boolean values. Okay, so all these are different examples that we have here. So I'm just trying to print one. 
So you can see that directly I'm printing one. Okay, it is not asking anyone. Okay, directly I can print two plus four, I can print two, 12 into three. So print is the option that give me that gives me direct result. I'm not going to write any program. It's a built-in function. Right, directly I can add, I can multiply. You can see all these are different operators we are using. Right, if I, so we are trying to calculate. So in the same way, uh, when I am trying to print float, okay, so here I am trying to print float. So what is float here? Float is nothing but a string value, right? 11.5, 11.5 is nothing but a float value, right? I can, I can use a print for printing any, 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 any output. Okay, we'll be using print very frequently. Okay, if I want to print an output, I want to use print. So now I am trying to assign a value x is equal to 55.45. So what is the data type? Yeah, friends, what is the data type of 55.45? Mm, yeah, exactly. It's a float, right? It's a float value. Yes. So now I am trying to assign this. Okay, we have already assigned uh, the value. Now, if I see directly, it will give me it is a float value. And I can I can directly see that it's a float value. Now, if I want to know what is the type. So what we have here, we have the type of X will be printed. So I am saying print here. Yeah. So what is, what is the type here? That is float. Okay. So now, uh, here, let me create A is equal to float. I have created A is equal to float. Okay. Try to run these lines. Okay. You have to create A is equal to float, then print float and find what is the type of float. Yeah. Just try to type it. Just paste that code in the chat box. Okay, you are going to create a variable a is equal to float. Okay, then you are going to print it. Then again, I want to know the type. So you are going to print type of that particular variable. Yeah. Everybody just try to type it and paste it. Right. First, you are going to assign a value, then you are going to print it. Okay. Then I need type to be printed, type of that particular variable to be printed. Mm, exactly. Right. Simple. So I am going to print. So here, yeah, type of it. So I am going to write it as the similar way. Right. I want to write print. Okay. So always a function, always a function will follow with parentheses. Inside that parentheses, we are going to provide the parameters or arguments to be added. So here in print, I am going to say type. Type is also type is also a function. So it also follows with the parentheses. Right? If you notice, so type is also a built-in function. Print is also a built-in function. So inside that, I am writing the variable name I have given. Simple. Here. Yeah. Right? We shouldn't change anything. Okay. If I if I write it a capital T, it will not work. Okay. So we have to maintain that so whatever we have with the syntax that to be maintained. Are we clear? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so in the same way. We can create a complex number, right? We can create complex number. So you can add a value. So when I run, if I see what is the type here, right? So that's complex, okay? So it will be stated as complex, right? If, if you are working on a complex number, if I want to see the type of complex number, it will be stated as complex here. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, when it comes to boolean here yeah the type true so what is the type true is true, uh, boolean and type false is false or boolean so it's a logical values indicating true or false we will be using them uh, when we are working on conditions so like uh, we have we have we have seen different operators in all these different operators so there are certain operators that will only give us boolean output. Okay, there again we'll be looking into this boolean <laughs> right are, are we clear with uh, integers and the type type function we have used right okay so next we have string okay so if i am writing string list and tuple okay these three are three different types of uh, uh, that we have here is it's a sequence type okay string list and tuples are sequence type so what is a sequence type here yeah remember what we have discussed why we call it as a sequence type yes friends in all in all these data types what is common ordered okay yeah either it is sequenced or ordered so what is that is common in all these three, three different data types yeah remember <clears throat> So how about indexing? Mm, yeah, basically. Yes, teacher. So, but the thing that is common is indexing. Yes or no? Right? So indexing is common in all these three different data. So how the indexing starts in Python? Yeah, friends. Yeah, exactly. Zero. Indexing always starts from zero. Okay, indexing in Python always starts from zero. Either it is string, list, or tuple. All these are sequence data types. That means there will be indexing. If you take the values, okay, so each and every value in the in the in these different data types will will be mapped to a specific index. Okay, so indexing starts from zero, one, two, three, four, right? So that's it. So that, that that is why we call it as index. So let's get a de uh, get uh, deeper into these uh, data types and see what are the different functions we have, what are the changes we can make. Okay. So and we'll be looking into different properties of these uh, different data. So uh, when it comes to string, a string is a series or sequence of characters. Okay. And we shouldn't only take it as alphabets. Okay, alphabets are characters. It could be anything, right? It could be letters, numbers, special characters. So whatever that are represented in single quotation or double quotation or triple quotation, right? So we call it as a string. Okay, we call that as a string. So anything that is enclosed in quotations, we call it as string. Simple. Okay, if you, if you see that, that is a string, right? So Python also recognizes it in a similar way. If I write uh, just Python, what it is. So if I, if I just represent that in quotations, it automatically recognizes that it is a string. And it says that if I ask what is the type, it will say that it is a string, right? So the quotations are very important. Either, either it could be a single quotation, double quotation or triple quotation. So they are marked by okay so characters can be accessed using indexing and slicing operations we have we have okay so when we have sequence we have indexing the same way we have looked into slicing operations again we'll be seeing okay so what is slicing operation and how we are going to work so strings are immutable so mutability right we have seen the differences so And I cannot make any changes in this. Okay, I cannot I cannot access into that particular value. If I want to replace, I cannot do that. Okay, we'll we'll see that okay. when we take a when we take practically a string and when we work on it, then we can. 
Uh, so we have positive indexing that starts from zero and we have negative subscript okay uh, indexing that starts from minus one. okay positive indexing starts from zero and negative indexing starts from minus one. okay so these are different properties of string are we clear yeah so what are the different properties of string so a series or sequence of characters okay a string is nothing but a series or sequence of characters so that contains letters numbers and special characters how it is represented it is represented in the quotations right the quotations could be a single quotation double quotation or triple quotation. so python recognizes these strings by using these quotations okay so that is one thing we need to remember and characters can be accessed using indexing and slicing operations there are two different operations by 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 using this indexing or slicing we can access into these characters so we have a sequence okay i can i can follow this index uh, uh, index and i can get the i can access into that particular index okay then immutability okay this is something we need to remember strings are immutable okay strings are immutable the contents of a string once created is created you cannot change the content then we have positive indexing and negative index positive indexing starts from zero negative indexing starts from minus one okay, okay. Uh, so here we are looking into a string okay it is a multi line line string but there are there are multiple lines here so or if i have a multiple lines i am going to represent in triple quotes okay either it is comment also we have seen commenting right when we have single line comment and multiple line comment in python single line comment will be given by hashtag and multiple line command will be given in triple quotations okay so here i am creating a multiple line string so when i run it okay that's the output okay you can see the output here so a okay so i'm just trying to print it now i am using something called a slash why do we use slash remember yeah slash represents yeah new line Okay, basically slash n represents new line. Okay, that will that will give me a new line there. So here you can observe that's the output. Okay, if I just run it, okay, that's the output we are getting. Okay, now if I run the next line with slash, okay, try to observe what is going to happen. Okay, I'm just printing a with slash, and you can see that it is giving the result in next line. Okay, we are, it is giving the in a new line. Okay, so it is it is dividing and here it is uh, saying so wherever we have a slash n here okay automatically that is being recognized okay, in this particular sentence so that is one line okay that's a new line that's a new line that's a new line okay how it is represented so when i have printed directly it is it has automatically divided the whole thing into two. here i have slash n slash n and i have slash n the similar way here in the bottom it is divided up to here to here that is one line okay then we have slash n. then we have some sentence here the sentence goes up to in the again i have slash n. we have the value here yeah. so wherever we have given enter and we have gone to the next line automatically that has shown shown me here okay so that is slash n. that gives me a new line then we have uh, print okay print i am i am printing data type is and i am giving the type and i am saying slash so how the output would be i am using print option here in print option i can use a string right there is an output okay for example um, i am writing a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 okay so now i have added a plus b c is equal to a 
this b. Okay. So first I'm going to assign these two values. Okay. Then I am going to run this. Right. So I so I haven't got any result because I haven't printed it. Right. So now I am going to print it. So I'm saying I'm giving print. Okay. So that's the function inside print. I am saying I'm giving a quotation here. So this is the output. Okay. So output C output. I'm giving a quotation here again. I'm saying C is equal to. I can write it anything. I can, I can write it anything. I'm saying output C is equal to. Okay. So whatever whatever result we are going to get. Okay. So that will be anchor. So that's all. So I'm giving comma. So I want to know whatever whatever output I'm getting. I want to know the type. So I'm giving type. Okay, type of C. Right, whatever result I'm getting, type of C, comma, slash. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to give slash. Whatever result I'm getting, that result will be. So now, will I be getting the value C? No, I am asking for type C here. Okay, I'll be getting what of the type, what, what is type of C? Okay, so run it and see what I'm getting. I'm getting type of okay type of C is this much. So I want only the C value. I want type here, I want C value. Right? Output C is equal to that. So when you are working on your programming, okay, when you are working on your programming, so what you are going to do? So you are going to write a logic and you should be getting an output. So this gives a way how to get your output. You can you can give a string and you can clearly say that my output for this is this. Okay, I can use the string here. Okay, in input I can use a string and I can I can create a statement. Okay, I can create a clear statement and based on that I can get my output. Right, like here. So output C is equal to that. Right. So that is one thing we can do. So how to use a string? Okay, that is something we are saying. String can be used in this way also. Okay. So in the next case, in uh, so I'm creating a string here. Okay. Now I just want to know what is the length here. Okay. Now what we are using. So here we are using, if you observe, we are using a function. Okay. We are using a function that's a built in function we are using that is length. Okay. We are, we are using a built in function that is length. Okay. So if I say length of S1, so that means uh, so how it is going to calculate length when it comes to string? So if I just write numbers here, it will start from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Is it correct? Yeah, friends. If I run this line, will my output will be 14 or anything else? Yeah, no. Why? Why, Teja? Why no? Okay, just I am trying to run this line and see. Yeah, definitely it's not. So I am getting 17. Why? What will? What is the reason? So it is taking along with spaces. Okay, so it will consider spaces also. <laughs> Here, so when we are running it, Okay, when we are when we are considering a string, when I am looking for the length of that particular string, it will also consider the spaces that we have there. Are we clear? Right. So, what is the function we are going to use? The function that we have used is length. Okay. So I haven't written any code here. Okay, I haven't written any code directly. I have used a keyword called as len that gave me the length of that particular string. Right. So, yeah, so that we can, we can use length function. Okay. Now, uh, one, one important operation that we have seen here, slicing. Okay. So when it comes to slicing, why do we use slicing here? 
if i want to access anything if i want to, if i want to retrieve only certain part of string so i am going to use something called as slicing okay so slicing always there is a format that we need to remember start stop and step okay so now what happens here start stop and step how we are going to take that value first we need to understand the syntax okay so in syntax the start is nothing but the start index okay stop is nothing but the stop index step is nothing but the step okay these are three index values so we are going to use the index values and based on that index values we are going to get the certain uh, certain part of that particular uh, string we are writing. if i want to extract a particular part of string i can do that so it is represented in square brackets okay if you see here so whenever we are doing slicing slicing is represented in square brackets inside that brackets you can see two columns right you can see two columns here so in these two in these columns first we have start this is nothing but start index so next we have stop index then we have step index clear so these are the three index values are going to provide if you do not provide any value in your start index and if you want to do slicing what happens by default the start index will be always zero okay and when it comes to step index okay so if i have like uh, maybe 0 1 2 3 and 4 if i have, if i'm not using any step index so always it will be looking at the program will be looking into every index uh, every index value okay 0 1 then it goes to 2 then it goes to 3 then 4 if i'm if i'm using step as 2 here it will leave one step and it will go to the second step then again to the second step clear right so that is start stop and step start stop and step that's slicing okay we are looking into something called a slicing and slicing we have to remember the syntax okay so it, it will come with quotations okay it will come with quotations inside that quotations okay we have three indexes start stop and step yeah, start index, top index, and step index. So by default, step index will be one. Okay. And if I do not give any stop value here, by default, it will take the end value. Right. If it is from four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the end value will be 10. So it will take up to end value. Okay. Now if I am providing the values, okay, I am saying uh, so I am writing it as one column uh, maybe i am writing as a six column and i am i am writing as one okay if you do not mention that also no issue so what do we have here what we are trying to say yeah if i am having a string like this maybe i am having python class that's a string now, what will be the output here in this particular slicing process? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody. Right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, what do we have one here so one so it should start from here right so it should start from one index uh so then we have six here six uh, where, where do we have six here c so will it take c yeah will it take c what is the rule no right definitely so whatever value we are giving here so it will take n minus one n is nothing but this value so here in this case, if I am substituting the n value, the value will be 6 minus 1 will be here. So it will take up to fifth index. Whatever value we have in fifth index, that will be taken. It will start from here. 
will end up to here. What about step here? I said one. So it will it will check each and every step. And the result will be y eh Exactly. Yeah. Right? Okay. Mm, yeah, yes. Teja. Uh, Teja ready. Any doubt? I didn't get uh, what, you, what you said. Do you have any doubt? Oh, okay. Uh, you are unmute. So I have asked. Okay, let's take a short break and come back. Okay. Uh, time is nine. One. Okay. Let's come back by nine ten. Okay, let's take a break and
Okay. Yeah, welcome back to session again. So before uh, getting into session, just as a reminder, yeah, I just want to introduce you to the channel, okay, the YouTube channel that we have for 360 DTMG. Please try to subscribe to it. Okay, you will have all live updates going on. Okay, along with uh, you can see uh, different sessions that we have already conducted that will be conducted and uh, the webinars that are going to happen. Okay, the success stories of our previous participants we have updated here and it will be happening every week. Okay. So along with that, the easy learning, right? The animated videos that we have created for each and every data science module that you can see here. And Python, it's like 20 hours uh, session that uh, we have already uploaded here. So deployment models, everything you can find, here, okay? Everything you can find here. have spray brackets here and we will have start index we'll have stop index and we'll have step index. okay so that's the syntax that we use by default start index will be always zero okay step index will by default it will be one and stop index it will take up to the end Okay, so that's the syntax that we have. So let's see some examples here. Uh, so I have taken name is equal to distance. So th that I am trying to define here. Okay, so name is, okay, that's a string, right? What we have here, it's a string. So I want to print, okay, print indexing of strings. Okay, just I'm trying to just print, okay, show you how print, how string works in print, okay? So yeah, you can do that. Now here it comes about the positive index. So I'm saying name zero. What will be the output here? Yeah, friends. Okay, so yeah, D. So D is the first index value. So when I run it, yeah, you can see. So what about name three? So I'm giving the index value as three. So what do we have here? So when I take digit, when I give the values here, so it starts from zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So yeah, we have three. And now. If I give print name minus, so what will be the result? Mm, yeah, exactly. Right. So it is called as reverse indexing and reversing indexing will always start from minus, okay, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six, right? So it always starts from negative. So when I run this line alone, yeah, that's the G. So the G is the last value. Clear? So we have both positive indexing and negative indexing. So starting when I give, when it is positive indexing, when I give the index as zero, so that will give me the first value. Okay. And if I give minus one, that will give me the last. Clear? So that is positive indexing and negative indexing. So let's use slicing. Okay. That's how we can access. Okay. Based on by using indexing, right? Indexing and slicing. These both are different operations. Okay. So in slicing, we are going to use index. So basically indexing will come with certain index value and based on the index value, I can access into each and every uh, uh, in character that is present in the string that is positive. Now, in line number 436, you can see that I have given name 
वन फोर ओके इन इन स्क्वेयर ब्रैकेट्स आई हैव गिवन वन कॉलम फोर ओके व्हाट डस दैट रिप्रेजेंट ही व्हाट इज वन व्हाट इज फोर या वी हैव कम अप विद आउटपुट दैट्स फाइन ओके सो अदर्स व्हाट इज वन एंड व्हाट इज फोर स्टार्ट एंड एंड राइट सो वी हैवेंट गिवन एनी वैल्यू हियर सो व्हाट इज द स्टेप वैल्यू हियर या व्हाट इज द स्टेप वैल्यू हियर या वन exactly right so we have one that is start index four is stop index and we haven't given any value so automatically by default value will be taken here so yes that's the form. okay so when i run it i am going to get i g i okay so what do we have in uh, print name okay we have given print name minus 1 to minus 3 to minus 1 so what will be the output what i'm going to get okay uh, how it is tm okay, let's see what we are getting here what are the values we have i'm taking digit mg right we are taking digit mg here So minus one. If I take it is minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six, and minus. Seven. Okay. Now we are saying minus three to minus. So minus three to minus. Seven. So first will be t. Okay. So when I am saying minus one, it will take only up to minus. Two. So we have seen n minus. Same thing will be followed here also. Okay. Yes. The output that you have. That is T exactly. Are we clear with this slicing part? Yeah. So uh, let me, if I give ring name and I give two column values and minus what will be the output? Yeah. Everybody try. Yeah, everybody has to try. What will be the output in this case? Mm -hmm. So I am writing it as print. Okay, I'm giving name. Right, variable name. Okay, I'm giving name. Okay, the caps. Okay. Right inside, I am providing. So I am giving, and I am saying minus one. Okay. Hmm. So what happened? So when I print it, yeah, right. So I can reverse the whole string. Yes, exactly. Right. I can reverse the whole. String. You can understand what is happening. So what we are taking here, we have taken the only step here, and remaining all we have we have got the default. So whatever default values, okay, the first value, okay, what will be the first value? The start index will be minus one, and the end end index will be at the end. Okay, so I am taking every step backwards. If I take every step backwards, everything will be printed. The whole whole thing will be printed in a reverse. Clear, right? So that is how we can use. The slicing, okay. We have seen four concepts. Okay, if you see here, uh, if we look into, so we have looked into what is indexing. Okay, then we have seen what is positive index, what is negative index, and then we have seen something called as slicing. Clear? Yeah. So these are the different concepts that we have. Seen. Are we clear up to this, everybody? Yeah. Are you clear up to this? Okay. So now I can find the length. Okay, we know that we have a function called as length, and I can find the length. 
let's try to update a string. Right? If I want to make any changes in this string, okay. But we have seen that string is immutable. Yes or no? String is immutable. So what we are trying to do here? Huh? I have created a variable. Okay, what is a variable? Uh, variable one is equal to hello world, and I have given some space. Okay, so it will take all the spaces and whatever that is there in between. Okay, so we have uh, alphabets. We have a special character. So everything that is there in between strings automatically that will be taken as a string. Right now I have run this. Right? So that's the string we have created. If I want to see a string, yes, I can see a string. Now I'm not making any changes here, but I want to add some. Okay, the, the created string will, will be saved. Okay, we are not making any changes in the created string. Okay, we are trying to make it, we are trying to add some value. So I am going to, you can see, I have added hello world and Python. So how we, how we have done it? I have used the arithmetic object. Right, I have used the arithmetic object. So whatever is possible, only that we can use here. Okay, if, if I use minus, what will happen? Will it work? No, right, unsupported operand. So, okay, whatever operand that supports, only that we can use, okay? The only operand that, that supports here, that is plus. If I want to add, yes, I can add. Right, we have seen. So, here it is saying it is a type error. Unsupported operand. What is that unsupported operand? That is plus. Okay, when you are using string, I can use plus. Yes, right? Now, if I want to print hello, Okay, if I want to print hello, you can print. Right. So in the same way, if I want to print a string, okay, if I want to print an output, and in the same way, when, when I am getting an output, directly I want to add something to that particular output. So what is what is the output here? The, the printing this particular variable is an output. So I'm trying to add a add a uh, string to existing string. Right? Yes, we can do that. So in, in the in the directly, how so you have to observe the syntax here. So what we are writing? I'm saying print. Okay. So print will come with parentheses. And I am giving a quotation here. Inside that, we are going to write a string that to be printed. Okay, that to be printed along with the output. So comma, so I have provided comma. Then I am writing that particular name, variable one. Okay, if I just want to print this, I'm just going to close it. No, if I want to add anything, yes, I can add it. Right, so rest whatever that is there outside this comma, okay, outside the comma, that will the variable. That's the output, that's the exact output that is going to print. And before this comma, that's a statement. Okay, you can you can give any statement. It's a string, right? So updated string, right? Uh, the change string, right? So upcoming string, anything, anything, any value you can give. So here I'm saying it is a up updated string. Okay, so when I print it, so directly the value comes along with by. Right, updated string, hello world, and Python. Yeah. Clear, right? So now, what happens if I use slash in here? So it gives me a next. So automatically, when I print this, that gives me a next. So now, can I use slicing here? Yes, I can use. Right? I know. I know the index values. Okay. Based on that, in that particular output, I want only certain values, and that should be added to another. So what I'm going to do? So up to here, it's the same. I am going to give. Now, what will be out? Yeah, friends. So now I am giving column and six. Okay. So what is the output of this particular statement here? Yeah, column and six. What we are trying to say? What is six here? What index it is? Is it start, stop, or 
okay it's a stop index okay so when i'm saying uh, six here it will take n minus one right so we haven't given any start index so it is zero we haven't given any step index that will be one so automatically it will start from zero it will take up to five right it will take up to five zero to five. clear right based on that we'll be getting the so let's run and see what is the option hello fine clear so we are seeing different ways how we can print some output here okay, in, in string format when we are working on string format so how i can use slicing how i can use the uh, so we have we have something like uh, uh, index okay, how we are going to use the index so if i want to print anything in a new line yes we have an expression called a slash n symbol okay uh, a symbol that follows okay uh, like we have a slash here okay that follows with n okay if, uh, if we have something like a slash following with t that is something related to tab there will be many different expressions we will be getting into them when we have regular expressions and so then now we have something called a uh, string format okay if i want to format a string that means already have created a string into that string i need to add something. okay so how can do there are different methods okay i'm going to show you different methods here we can use any of these methods depending on your requirement okay so we will be looking into something called as regular expressions right when we have regular expressions uh, it's a library that is very specific to string data Okay, when you have text data, so regular expressions are very, very specific to text data. There, you will find many of these different symbols, right? So, when I use anything with modulus, okay, like uh, maybe if it is F, there is certain meaning. Okay, if I am using modulus and S, yes, there is a meaning, right? Modulus and D, right? If I am saying modulus F, I am representing float. Modulus S will represent a string, right? And modulus D will represent an integer. That's a digit. So we can say it as a digit. Okay. Now, I am going to use these expressions. Okay. And I am going to add certain values to my existing string. Okay. How to do that? So, in the first case, we are seeing I am using the modulus symbol here. Okay. So, here in case, okay, when we are using integer numeric values, the modulus operators work in a different way. Okay, when it comes to string, the modulus operator works in a different way. Okay, so here in this case, when I'm when I'm using uh, modulus here, so inside we have given certain values. Okay, first you can see here modulus three f. What are, what does three f indicates is if I am giving modulus f, that will simply take the float value. Now, when I am saying float, the float value could be anything. It's a continuous value. It could be any value. So now I want to restrict this particular value up to only three decimals. Right? Can I do that? Yes, I can do that. So how? By using a, into a value. Okay, I am saying 3f. That means I want to restrict this up to only three. So whatever value you are providing, the output will give me only three. Right. So here I have given 6.4560. So the output will be only 6.456. Right. That is one. Okay. So we have already specified. So what is format here? Format here is nothing but a variable. Okay. I'm just creating a variable here. Okay. Here in this case, the format is nothing but a variable. Okay. In that variable. So I am giving a string. Okay. I am creating a string. In that string, I am saying that. So, whatever values we are giving, so when we are replacing them, automatically they will be replaced based on these particular rules that we have provided. So, this particular value is okay, and I am providing string here in the next, next position. So, first position I should have float, second position I should have string, okay, third position is I should have some decision. 
I have given a value. Okay, I have given uh, a special character and a digit. Okay, now if I run this, right, I am giving. I am saying format. Okay, inside that format, I am going to create a string. In that string, I have given already values. So at the beginning, we are giving modulus. Okay, whatever values we are we are assigning along with this modulus symbol here as an expression. So we are giving again them. Okay, it, it is being used as a function here. Okay, observe, maybe, maybe this can, this is like a, so inside that we are writing all these values. So when we run it, yeah. Sorry, I haven't run this before. First we have to run this, then we have to run. Okay, so I haven't run this before. So first I have run this, I have assigned format values, then I have, so you can, you can observe clearly that it is 6.456. So I have specified in the next portion, I'm waiting Python. Okay. This is dollar. If I change, if I change this, okay, here I'm giving six. How it will work? Yeah. Will it work now? Or will there be any error? Yeah, friends. Will line number 459, will it work or will there be any error? Yeah, can you say? Just type, type and run and see what is happening here. Yeah, are we getting any error? No, we are not getting any error, right? It is taking it as 6.00. Now we have uh, modulus D. If I am giving 1.2, now will it work? Yeah, will it work or we will get any error? D is nothing but integer. Okay, digit. Okay, D is nothing but integer or digit. Okay, I am giving 1.2. Will it work or will there be any error? Yeah, friends, online. Yes. Why there is no response? Yeah. Will there be error or we can run the program? Error exactly right. So because we are very specific that that should be integer. Hmm? Okay. So yeah, it's taking it as integer. Okay, let me use more values here. Okay. Okay, it's it's it is changing. Okay, this yeah, we are not getting error, right? You can see that it is changing this value as integer. Okay, it is changing the value as integer, the nearest integer, and it is given. Okay, so it is converting the value in the form of integer and it is providing the result. In both cases, okay, in both cases, we will be getting the result. Either either you either if you give float or not, digit or not. So that these values will be converted automatically and we are going to get values, right? So that is modulus F, modulus S and modulus T. These are the three different symbols. Okay. Let them, uh, let us, let us use them in a different. So what we are going to do, I, go, I want to use them in print format. Okay, when, when I'm working on print here. So uh, here in line number 363, So what do we have here? Uh, I'm writing my name is, I'm giving modulus S and the weight is modulus D. So now it is very important. Okay. Uh, so if I print here, what will be the output? Yeah. No, no, not exactly. Why we'll get error? See, here, here, 
uh, what we are trying to look here, the modulus symbol, whatever we have here in string format can be used in this way also. Okay. So what we are doing first, I am going to initialize this particular string here. And I am saying that these are blanks. Okay. Like fill in the blanks. For example, my name is here a blank we have. Okay. And weight is blank cages. Okay. So now I want to fill, fill in the blanks. So the values where I'm providing, I am providing the values at the end. Okay. I'm, I'm providing modulus and I'm providing the width and 20.5. So there is, there should be certain order to be maintained. That is something. So whatever order we have maintained here. So it is modulus of S comma modulus of D. Okay. That's the order, right? So here we have a C. So the same order to be maintained here also. Clear. So automatically when we run this, so in the output, you will be getting values with these values. Say right? my name is the width and weight is 20 minutes. Now in this case, if I just interchange them, will it work? Yeah, everybody try. If I am just interchanging these values, I'm, I'm writing uh, 23.5. Uh, Okay, I'm just removing this. Okay, now will it work? Yeah, destroy. No, no, not exactly. Right? So if I run it, yeah, I'm getting type error. Exactly. Right? So it is very specific. We should be looking into this fact. Okay, let me add one more value. Okay, I have added one, one more line. Will it work? Yes. Yeah, now, did it work? Try to, try to run it and see. I've added a third value. No, exactly. That will also not. Because the number of values you have given up. So if I write something like this, okay, I'm saying, uh, comma and um, let me interchange them as it is, whatever we have. Okay, and just um, that I'm getting. Okay. So now uh, we are trying to insert this values. Okay. I am giving comma here and I am saying uh, and my height is. Okay, I'm giving F. Okay, now this should work. So I'm giving these values. Okay, I have given the values in the order. Okay, when I run it, yeah, exactly. Okay. So my name is David, and weight is this much, and my height is this much. So, here, are we clear up to this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so next, I can use input function, right? I can also use something called as input function. So input function, if I run it, it's a built-in function. Okay. So generally, we use uh, input function when we are when we are working on certain certain logic, and we may have multiple inputs. There is no fixed input. So like uh, before, in cases, what we have done. So already have defined the value. I said that A is this much, B is this much. But in this case, I don't know what will be A, what will be B, right? So in that condition, I am going to use something called as input. So when I run it, <coughs> it will ask me what is the input. So I have to give the input name. Okay, I'm giving the name as lambda strand. So now what will happen? So Automatically, this particular name is saved in this particular variable. If I run this only name, yeah, right, I have. And we have given some space. Right, based on that, I'm going to get the particular result. So we use, if I see what is the type, yes, you can get, that's a string type. Here, yeah. by default, in this value, I'll be getting string type. Now, 
I want to hard code. I want to say that I want only integer. Okay, I want only integer. So what we have for integer, we have a function here, right? I n t is a function that is used for integer. So here I am saying that I want only integer. It's an inbuilt function. You can see when when we are writing this code. Okay, so I am saying eight is equal to i n t. That's a function that is already present that will follow with a parenthesis. Again, inside I am writing one more function that is input. That will follow. That will also follow with the parents. Inside that, I am saying enter. Okay, enter your value, and I am doing. Yeah. So when I run it, okay. So when I run it, so it will ask me enter your value, and here if I am giving a b c, okay, what happens with a b c? a b c is a string value, yes or no? So when I run it. So that will give me an error. Okay, that will that will give me an. Error. So I have to give the specific value. Okay, so if I remove this, okay, let me remove this. Okay, I have removed this. Okay, so I am using input only. Input. Enter your weight. So now I am running it again. So I have given something like A B C. Okay, A B S. So what happened? I have got the result. Enter weight. Enter your weight A B C. Here we are hard coding it. If we are not hard coding it, automatically by default it will take an int. Clear, right? Are we clear up to this? Do we have any doubts? Yeah. Okay. In the same way, uh, we have we are using print option here. So already we have given these weights, right? Name and weight are already specified. Okay. So if I, I have given a value, name, yeah, I have given the name, and it comes to weight, I haven't given the weight. Okay. Let me run this line again. Okay. Let me give the weight. Weight as sixty. Okay, now these two values are saved. Here. Okay, I am just running it. I can see that we have sixty here. We have names. Now oh, I am using the same variables. Okay, whatever variables I have used before, the same variables I am using again. Okay. Uh, so here I am saying my name is. Yes, it is. Uh, now we know what is uh, modulus s, right? It is speaking about string value. Okay, modulus d is speaking about digit. Okay, so any value will be converted into digit format. Okay, that is something we have seen earlier, right? So modulus s is about string, and modulus d, okay, that we have, it is about <coughs> digit. So automatically these values will be coming there. So from where we are getting these values, name and weight, we are getting from input. Right? We have used something called as input function. Okay. So if you just combine and see the whole thing here, okay. If you just see these lines together, so what we are trying to do? So I have just given two values here. Okay. So I have given input function. So it will ask me what is the input. Okay. The logic will ask me what is the input. I have given a j, right? Then I want to I want to get the weight details here. So I am getting weight details, and then now I am trying to print it. How I am how I am going to print it? My name is this, and my weight is. This. So from where I need to get those values directly? I can get these values from here. So whatever it is. So every time the input may change. Right. Every every time uh, there is a form, there is an application, and every time a new user will be giving new details. That's the in. Yeah. So based on that, when I run it, so directly I'm going to get the sentence. 
right? Once again, if you change the input, automatically here the value will be changed. Right? All all these three all these three lines that you are seeing, these are interconnected to each. Clear? So that is that is one way we can write. So that that is one way we can write the program. And we have one more option. Right. So we have one more option here. Okay. Here we have a built-in function that is format. You can use format. Yeah, you can use something called as format. You can use format here. What will happen? So here I am giving an input. This string, okay, this is a string, and the two flower brackets we are giving here. That is something related to format function. Okay. So in format function, we are going to provide these values. So whatever value we are providing in format function, that will be automatically inserted into this particular flower matrix. Okay. So when I just run it and show you, yeah. so this string, this is a string inserted. So the inserted value automatically got into this. Here. Yeah. Right. So whatever string we are getting, that value will be automatically inserted. So the same can be applied here also. So first I have used input function. So I have got name, again input function, weight we have got. Now I am using format function here to insert these values into. So what we have to do here? Here I am not using modulus S or modulus D. Okay, I am not using modulus S or modulus D. So in place of modulus S and modulus D, I am using flower brackets. So automatically, whatever values, okay, whatever values we are providing here, that will be just inserted into these particular flower brackets. Okay, so here it could be any odd. So I'm not going to get any error. Okay, if you see here, before, <coughs> so before, if I change these values, okay, if I give yes, and D, okay, we have S and D in order. If I change D and S here, if I run it, I'll be getting an error. But in this case, I will not get any error. If I interchange also, I will not get it. Automatically, it will view the values. Okay, first let me run this. Right, so I am getting the value. My name is Ajay. Right, uh, let me change this and see. Do we get the same values or do we get error? Right. So when I just run it, yeah, I'll be getting the values. Right. I'm getting my name is 60 and my weight is this much. We will not get any error. Okay. Before, in that case, we have seen that we have error. Yeah. So that's a major difference. And I can I can use I can use the indexing here. So index number, I can provide the index number. If I see here, uh, so as always starts with zero, zero and one. If I take this as a tuple, okay, if the, if they, if I take these values in a tuple, so we'll have the values. So whatever value that is there in zero, that will be printed here, whatever value is in weight. Okay. So I can specify the index values and based on that also I can get the output. Clear, yeah. So in the same way, in the same way, in the brackets, I can give any value. I can specify R is equal to that particular value and I can get the index. Clear? So that is one model we have. Okay, that is one way, that, that is one technique. Okay, here we have, we are, we are looking into different techniques here. Okay, this is one technique that we have seen. Okay, by creating a variable directly and by providing the expressions here. Okay, either it could be float, string, or uh, the, or we have digit. Okay, any, anything we have. So automatically that will be replaced. Okay, that is one way of doing. And then we have seen input, right? How to use input function. Uh, then we have seen the format function, right? When we use format function, we use flower brackets. Then finally, we have something like, uh, F string, right? I'm going to give F string. I'm going to provide the name, okay? Name of that particular uh, variable directly and I can get the values. Simple. Ajay is 60 degrees. Always, always we can check, right? 
uh, what what is the type of are we clear with this yeah mm, let's try to create let's starting from let's first use this method okay uh, i want to get i want to create something like uh, my education is okay okay my education is okay, i want to give a blank here okay and it is completed in the year okay then i want to give blank okay and now i am working in i am going to give a space okay with a salary of Yeah. So let's create different formats. I want all these formats. Okay. Starting from format. Okay. This format we have seen. Okay. This is one method. Then I want input method. Okay. Then we have to use format inserted. Okay. We have to use format these values. Okay. Whatever values that should be printed. And finally, we have to use F string also. Everybody has to create it. Okay. That's that. So I want this value. My education is okay. So you can give anything. Okay, my education is uh, B Tech. It is completed in the year 2021. And now I am working in maybe like any company, uh, maybe Vipro with a salary of um, something. Yeah, everybody try to uh, everybody try to come up with the code. Okay. You have, to, you have to start from this part. Okay, line number 458. Okay, line number 458. Okay, first you have to apply this and you have to run it and show me how you are getting the result. That's method number one. Okay, then you have to use input method <clears throat> that is two. Then I want you to use, I want you to use format. Okay, that is method number three. Then finally, you have to use F string. Okay, all these should be used on this particular string. The string is this. Everybody try to run it. Once it is done, please confirm. Okay, first you will be working on this method. So this will be definitely ring. Okay, just I am giving you means maybe this could be digit. Okay, you can give digit here. Okay, and this will be again a string value. And this will be again a maybe I can use float. Use float. Okay, use three, four.
Yeah. Everybody working on it. Once it is done, please uh, implement. Okay. Kartik, have you done all these methods? That is one method. Then you have to work on input. Okay. Then F string finally. Okay. Format function also. Okay. Great. Great. Others, if you have any challenges, you can ask me. Yeah, that's a question. Okay, great. Okay, uh, everybody should be trying that. Okay, let's continue. If you have any challenges, you can definitely ask me if you have any doubts. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so now uh, there are different uh, functions that are associated with strings. Okay, when we have when we are creating a logic, then we can use all these different functions. So uh, these are all built-in functions. When I say built-in function, we are not going to write any program for that particular built-in function. That is already available. Okay, it's an, it's an available function. So I'm going to just bring that function I'm going to use. So it will be, it will be, uh, we'll be looking into built-in functions and user defined functions again. We have we have a topic. Okay. We'll be we'll be coming across. So let's look what are the uh, what are the different functions we have here. Here, yeah, it's a when we use triple quotes when we have multiple line string we are writing. Okay, so I've just run it, right? So if I see what is the type, yes, it's a string. Clear. So in the same way, I'm using center. Okay, there is there is there is a function called a center. Okay, so if I just run it, so I have already defined the name here, Sharat. Then we are running. You see what is happening here if you count from starting to end here okay, if you start counting from starting to end okay so what you're going to get you will be getting 30 different spaces okay so it will automatically create 30 spaces in between 30 spaces wherever you have name okay your name has some six characters right that six characters will be placed at the center if there is a requirement where you need your characters to be placed at the center, there I am going to use a function called a center. The center function is associated with string. Okay. So now, uh, so now I have run it. In the same way, we can see name dot center fifty. If I want to look into the length, the length will be fifty. Right. If I just run only this line here only up to from here to here. I'm not running length here. If I see, so all these are 50 characters. In between that, we are going to have shell. That's a function. Okay, it's a function. I'm not writing any program here. Right, okay. I'm, so I'm just using whatever program I have that is already existing. So while we are processing, uh, uh, a text data when you when you are going to work on text mining okay so then these different functions will be very useful okay, you'll you'll find a lot of applications there okay when we are working on practically on text mining so now uh, the next 
that we have here is string. Okay, when we have string, uh, here I'm creating a string here. Now, what is a substring? Okay, all these are different characters that we have. Okay, if I take each character, each character is a substring of the string. Okay, so here I am defining the substring is equal to i. Okay, I'm saying that the substring is equal to i. So uh, let me define it. Okay, if I just see what I have in substring, so that is i, what I have in string. So these are variables, right? I'm just checking what I have in string. Okay. So now I am saying count string dot. Okay. So here we have a function called as count. Now I want to count how many substrings are present. Clear? So when I run it, so when I see, if I see what is the count there, there are three. Okay. If I use it directly, okay, let me check if I'm using it directly. So, if I see what I have in count, okay, right here I am predefining it before and I am uh, defining, uh, I am defining it uh, to a variable and I am giving the value. So, next time what I did, I did directly. I can, I can do it uh, for any value. Uh, if I take A, let me check for A. How many times A is repeating? A is substring, right? When I run it and when I see what I have in count, so if I want to print that, so what I have to do? Print the count. Okay, the count in count. Okay, just I am giving print. Okay, the count is three. Yeah. So that is a count function. So what we have seen, we have seen center. So what are the different functions we have seen up to now? Yes, friends. What are the different built-in functions we have seen up to now? Yes. There are, there are different functions we have seen, right? From the beginning, we have seen print. Then we have seen length. We have seen input function, right? I have seen, so we have seen integer function. Yes or no, right? All these are different functions we have seen. Then we have seen something called a center. Then, then now we have seen something called count. Count, length, format, exactly, right? Format, I have missed it, right? We have used to format all these are different input functions we have seen after. So count is one of them. The count function is one. So if I want to count the substrings, yes, I can do by using this particular function. So now uh, <clears throat> I'm done. So just I'm asking what is the length of string here? It will give me the length of a string. Count after first i and before the last i. Now, what we are trying to do here. So as either it is a string or a substring, it is sequential. Right? Either, it is, either it is a string or substring, it is sequential. So I want to get the substring value here by using index values. If I take index values, so I will be counting from here to here, right? We have a start index and end index here. So I will be seeing where do we have seven, okay? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, right? So then up to 19. So if I take the complete data, so if I take complete sentence from up to last, okay, maybe, maybe I have 20 different characters. So I want to take only up to 19. So yes, I can do that by using count function, right? If I print the value, so I have two. So how many i's I have? So what, whatever substring, substring is i. So how many i's I have? Let's look how many i's we have. Uh, here we have an i and here we have an i. Oh, it is taking up to that. So let me change this. Answer. Maybe if I'm taking it as 10, okay, between seven and 10, how many i's we have here? If I run, if I print it, we have one. Okay. So depending on that, depending on index also, we can we can look into the substring. Okay, we'll take a short break and come back. Okay, uh, spend five.
will come back by 10 10. Okay. Take a short break.
Okay, friends, let us uh, restart the session again. Um, before that, now the live session is going on. Okay, that you can access from our YouTube channel. Okay, so all the details, all the updates, success stories webinars topics so everything will be updated here okay please subscribe to our channel okay uh, and so that you will not miss any updates okay so that's count function so we have seen what is a count function in the same way we have uh, seen before uh, so there are different functions that are specifically associated with strings here. Okay. So now we have a function called as is all numeric. Okay. What happens? Here? What will be the output if I am using this function? Yeah, friends. Here we are using a function called as is all numeric. We are asking a question. Okay, so we have created a string, and we are asking we are asking a question: Is all numeric? So if it is all numeric, okay, if it is alpha numeric value, okay, if it is alpha numeric value, so then it will say that it is yes. So obviously the result will be in boolean format, either it is true or false. So in this case, if you see here, I am giving. I'm just assigning this particular string. Okay. And we are giving uh, is alpha is this particular variable and the data that we have is it alpha numeric or not? So when you are running it, yes, it is true. Okay. Now, what is the what is the output for 531 line? Yeah, friends. Yeah, can you say what is the output for 531 line? Yeah, false, exactly. Why? Because we have spaces here, <clears throat> right? Spaces will be taken in a different way. Okay, it is it is alpha numeric. We have alphabets and numeric, but here we have. Okay, sorry. Yeah, that's a different. Way. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's true here. Okay, here also it is. Uh, so let me assign this first. Okay, let me run. Okay, it will be false. Because we haven't assigned that value. So whatever whatever result we are getting, that result we are getting from this one. Okay. So whatever spaces we have in between, these spaces will not be considered as either the alphabet or the or numeric. It will be taken as a special. Okay. It's a, it's a, uh, it's like a special error. So no space in this string. Okay, automatically it is thing. If I give a space here, and if I ask again, okay, if I run it, and if I ask whether it is is all numeric it will false. <clears throat> okay. So in the same way, here we are asking is alphabet. Yes, it is an alphabet. So directly when I run it, I'm going to get that value. True. Right? Is digit, is it digit or not? So the output will be right. So in the same way, here if I run it and if I ask is it digit, what it will be? It will be false. So here I'm creating uh, a variable here. You can see we have caps. We have, we have, we have given caps here. And there are certain smaller case values. So I'm just asking what is the type? Okay, what is the type here? That is string and name. So I'm just printing it. So that is a value. Now I want to change this. Right, now I want to change this. So I am using to make first letter capital, right? Sentence case, we see it generally it has a sentence case, right? So I want to use, so the function I can use is capitalize function. So when I just run it, everything, whatever, whatever data we have, it will be automatically taken, it will change, right? So if I just change this to name, okay, just I'm going to run it and now, I'm going to use capital S. You can see that the first letter is changed. Right? 
In the same way, if I want to convert the data, if I run upper, okay, that means the whole thing will be converted into upper case. The same way, the whole thing will be converted into. So what about swap case here? So it reverses the whole thing. Okay, for example, if I'm taking uh, same name here, so we have so we have some part of it we have the uppercase values and some part of it we have lowercase values. So I am using swap case. Okay, yeah, right. It will swap the case. What is a swap case? If it is a uh, if, if if it is an uppercase, it it will convert it to lowercase. Lowercase will be converted to uppercase. In that way. Okay. So that is called as factors. So these are all different functions. Okay. We have to remember that there is no other code. If, if in case of uh, smaller case uh, L, I use uh, uppercase, it will not work. Okay. So that should be maintained. Okay. So that should be maintained. Only, only these words will be. Yeah. Are we clear? So if I want to know for this function, I can go to definition. So what are the different functions we have seen up to now? So we have uh, started with the center. Okay, we have seen a function called a center. Then we have seen count. Okay, then we have looked into is alphanumeric, is alphabet, is digit. Okay, capitalize, uppercase, lowercase, swap case. Right. All these are different functions we have seen that are associated with the string. Okay. So just to see how this works, okay. So I am creating and when I'm running it, everything will be counted. If there is a requirement, okay, when we have a requirement, so you are going to use all these functions and you are going to write your, you are going to build your logic. So now uh, there is one more option that we have is replace. Okay, there, is, there is one more function that we have is replace. So I'm just running this line. Okay, this string is a this is a string example. And is this really as a string? Okay, that's a sentence here. That's a string here. <clears throat> now in reply, I'm calling this particular function. So I'm calling, you can see the syntax dot replace. And replace will always come with the parenthesis inside that parenthesis. On left side, I am writing is, and here that should be replaced with was. Okay, so let us see how it is done. Okay, that's the sentence we have. Okay, I'm just trying to print it. Okay, what is happening? Every every letter wherever we have is, okay, that will be converted. What about this? Is it converted? Why it is not converted? Yeah, friends. Why this is not converted? Case sensitive, exactly. Right? It is case sensitive. So it recognizes here. I said I have given smaller, okay, smaller case i. So it is it is representing. So automatically that will be converted. Right? Replace. Okay, what is the option here? We use an option called as replace. Yeah. So now what we are going to do, I am going to provide an index, okay, position, a specific position. And I, I based on that, I am going to run it. So let me run and show you how the result. So what is happening here? Here we have ease that is not changed. It is only changed up to this one. So here it is taking the position. How many times we have ease one time, two times. Uh, maybe this is not considered. Maybe this, this, this is the third time, right? If I just count the substring, right, it will count. How it will count? This is one, two, and this is three. 
so it is so we have given that two okay only up to second position it will right only up to that we are getting the change okay, the values are getting changed clear <clears throat> So that is a simple replace function. You can use replace function anywhere. Then you can use and you can check. Now we have join. Okay, there is there is a function called as join. Okay, so I want to join reply. Okay, I am using reply here and I am using a column. By using column, we, we want to join. What is happening? Each and every value. Okay, each and every value or each and every character is now join by using a column we can we can space we can place any value okay so we are using something called as join join is the function right so these are all these are all different functions okay you can use them any any uh, while you are writing any logic these are all different functions okay so you can you can list out all these functions right so initially what you can what, what you can do uh, we have different Mm, you have to see such a way that if I have integer, okay, I have float, I have complex number, right? So are there any functions associated with integer? Are there any functions associated with float, complex number? That you have to look into. Then again, come to string. So list out all the functions that are associated with string. You should know. Okay, you should know what are the functions that are associated with string. In the same way, you will be working with list tuple right so when it comes to dictionary set so there will be certain set of functions that will be only associated with this particular data okay so we will be looking into all those now we have seen string so these are the different uh, uh, functions we have so try to try to list out all these functions and try to work on them Okay, are you are you running the code along with me, everybody? Yeah. Okay, great. Try to try to run the code along. Okay, now uh, we are looking into line number five eighty one. Okay, so we have something called a split. Okay, there is a function called a split. So what split will do? It will split all the values. Okay, for example, um, let me create this. Okay, that's that's a string we have. Okay, now if I print that, what is happening? So wherever we have slash n, okay, that became a new line. So up to here, let's look into this. Okay, this is completely a string here, and I have printed it from here to here. It is one part, and after slash n, okay, after slash n. It gave a new line, and in that new line, it has been printed. Okay, so <clears throat> that is how new line works. Okay, that is how new line works. This slash n works in that way. Now I am using split function. So how does split happens here? I, here I am not giving any expression here. Split I have left blank. So how does split happens here? What do you think the output would be? Yeah. So if I'm not providing anything by default, it will take space. Right. By default, it will take space. So do we have spaces here? Yes, definitely we have spaces here. This is one space, this is two space. Right? That, 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 that's a second space. <clears throat> when I run it, So what is happening? Okay, now when, when I use split function, whatever result we are going to get, that result will be in the list format. Okay, we have seen what is a list earlier. List will be represented in square brackets and it is separated. Okay, the items or that are the objects or items that are present inside the list, these are separated by commas. So we will be having, so this is item number one, two, and three. So when I have used split function here, it has splitted the whole string into three parts. How it has done that? It 
has done that by using space, the white spaces. Okay, there are two white spaces, so we have got uh, two different commas here. Okay, it has it has divided into three different parts. So the resultant data will be in the format of list format. That is something to be remembered. We have to remember that when I use split, the result, whatever value we are getting, that will be in the list format. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Right. So it is directly. So now I am just giving the space. Okay. I'm saying space here and I am trying to run it. Let's let me. <clears throat> so what is happening here? So it has taken only one space. So again, it will count. Okay. How many spaces we have? Okay. When it has counted how many spaces, it has found that there are no two spaces. Space number one and space number two. So we have restricted up to space number one. So whatever value you are getting, we are getting up to here and remaining, we have got that as a different string. Clear? Are we clear? Yes. Okay. For example, um, if I change this, okay, here I am providing slash. Okay. So that should be provided in quotations like this. Okay. Let me check. I'm just running straight one here. So we have print here. This is the data. Okay. Yeah, you can see that I am using hyphen to split the whole string. So wherever we have hyphen, that has been split into a different term. Are we clear? You can use any special any special characters, any symbols uh, based on based on the presence of that particular value. So here I have uh, have uh, quote, I have hyphen I have used this. Okay, if I had something else, I might have used something else. Clear? Are we clear up to this? Do we have any doubts? Line number five eighty six up to five eighty six. Are we clear? Do we have any doubts? Okay, so next we have something called as a list. The list is a data type. Okay. So what are the different properties of list? So a list is an uh, ordered sequence of items. Okay. Represented using square brackets. Values in the list are called elements or items. It can be written as a list of comma separated items. Yes, these are the values. And items in the list can be of different data types and values of list are mutable. So these are the different points that we have. So when I have a list here, so this is a list. Okay, we are creating list. So when I'm saying list one is equal to A, what do we have? We have only one value, right? We have only one value. Now we are, we are trying to take multiple values. Okay. If I want to take multiple values here, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to say list one is equal to, I'm going to create a list here. Okay. List is a list is like a container. Okay. It, 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 it holds okay, different values. Okay. So in this, in this container, so it is, it will be represented by square brackets. That means Python will recognize these square brackets. If you are writing anything in square brackets, it will be it will recognize as list. Okay, so now I, now I have square brackets here, and what we, what we are what we are looking into uh, the list can take can hold any data types. Right, that means for the for example we are given here it can hold. Sure, what is the what is the data type here? It is string. Right, three sixty digit. It's a string. 2013, it is an integer. It is an integer. Right. So when I say here again, it is a string, it is a float, it is complex value, it is Boolean. So list can hold any data type. <clears throat> yeah. So that's one point that we have seen. And all these, <clears throat> all these are called as elements or, or items. Okay. Elements or items of this particular list here. So how they are separated? They will be separated by using commas. 
right the elements or items okay elements or items that are present in the list are separated by commas and these are mutable okay definitely list are mutable so in this regards only we'll be looking into many different functions that are associated with list okay values can be changed if, if i have created this if i want to change the list yes i can do it. okay so let me create a okay so can i create a list of list is it possible that means uh -huh. so i am creating one more list here inside that i am giving yes definitely that is possible so i can create a list of list right i can I, if i run it yeah uh -huh. Yeah. So now I can access. Yes, definitely I can access. How how can I access? It is a sequence. Okay. So when it is a sequence, when we have all these different values here, so the value starts from zero, one, two, and three. Right. The first. Okay. The first index. The always always the indexing will start from zero. Right. That is something already we are. So always indexing starts from zero. So here I am saying print list one. So what is the what is the Output here, the output will be maybe second time we have run this, right? So maybe not we have taken. So when I run it, the output will be SSS, right? So now I want to access into the third. Yes, I can do that, right? Now one to four. So it will in the same way, in the same way, start, stop, and step. Okay, whatever we have seen earlier same thing will be followed here also right if i'm giving the bracket start stop and step so this we call it as slicing right this is something we call it as slicing so here in this case if you are taking this particular list here if i'm writing one four okay so what is the output yeah friends Yeah, what is the output here? <coughs> Zero, one, two, three, four, and five. These are the index values. Okay, so it will always start with zero by default, but here we have already provided the value that is one. Okay, what about four here? If I say four, it will take n minus one. So if I am saying four, it will take three. So this should be the value. Mm, can we view alpha numeric values? Yeah, this is alpha numeric value. Hey, this is alpha numeric. But we need to. Uh, we are giving it in the string form, okay? Because uh, integer float, these are the data that we have. Okay, combining both automatically that will become a string. Okay, that becomes alpha numeric and that becomes a string. Okay, so we have integer float and complex value. These are the numerical values. So individually, I cannot give. If I give here, if I remove this. So uh, what do we have here? What, what is the data type that we have here? We don't know. Right, exactly. So yeah, there is a error here. There is a syntax error. Right, we have given an alpha numeric value. We will be getting a syntax error. So how to rectify that? So we have to give that alpha numeric value in string form. Now it will work. Right, when I run it, yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's look. Uh, let's look into. <coughs> Different functions that we have. So I'm creating a list here. Okay, we are creating a list here, and I want to add some. Okay, I want to uh, change <clears throat> something in this list. I want to change one, two, three to four fifty. 
how can i do that we can we can do that okay because here we have indexing 0 1 2 and 3 so now in this case i am trying to show you i want to change whatever we have in the second position i have zara zara should be changed to 55 plus 4 40j okay so zara should be changed to 55 plus 40j now <clears throat> if i run it so what i'm doing i'm giving a square bracket here inside that i am giving the index value so when i run it and let's print and see what will happen. right now it is changed so now i want to change 123 to 450 so how we have to give yeah just write that statement and send it to me in chat 123 to be changed to 450. Everybody, it's a simple program. Exactly. Right? So, 0 is the index value. So, we are going to give the index value and we are going to change it. Right? Simple. It will be automatically changed. So, if I want to replace a value, if I want to replace a value, so I can do that by using the index value. Okay, that can be done. So that is one thing to be remembered. Okay, and now we are looking into a function called as append. What is append? What do you what do you mean by append? Adding elements at the end. Okay, generally in general, yes, adding an element. Okay, append is nothing but adding an element. If I want to add an element, for example, already we have these are the different elements we have. If I want to add one more element to this. Okay. So if I add one more element, what will happen? Automatically that value will be added to the end when we are using append. So if this the value that we are trying to add, that will be added to the end. Okay, let's uh... Okay, so I want to add 2009. So what is the list we are taking? This is the list we are taking. I'm just running that. So that is existing list. Okay. So to that list, I am trying to add a value. So where this value will be added, the value will be added at the end because we are using append function. Okay. So 2009. So when I print, exactly. So that is that is the use. Okay, append will be okay, you are going to use append. Okay, when we are writing our logic, okay. Uh, for example, uh, there is uh, there is there is a logic that will generate some data. Okay, for example, see, uh, I have one, two, three, four, and five. This is a list. Just I am saying, okay, and each value should be multiplied. Okay, each value should be multiplied by 20. Okay, and here, uh, maybe these values I am getting individually. I am not getting these values from. So, these values are being generated from other process. Okay, and every time when we get this value, this should be multiplied. And to save these values, ultimately these values should be saved somewhere. I am going to use an empty list. So I'm going to create an empty list. So inside this empty list, I'm going to write and uh, so I'm going to write a logic such a way that if I use append here, whatever values that are, that are being generated here, that will be added simultaneously. So first I'm going to get a value 1 into 20. So that will be added here. Then the next value, whatever we are multiplying, that will be added to the second push. Then in the third, then in the fourth, because we have used append value. So in this way, there will be certain functions you are going to look into when practically you start working. So append will be very useful, append function. Okay, so that is append function. So next, we have something called as pop. So pop is nothing but the position. Okay, it, it, it is the position that we are going to have. So what happens with pop here in this case, we are trying to add something. So pop is something related to remove. 
so i can remove any any of the element by using the position how we are going to get that position based on the index value but here if i if i do not give any position automatically that will delete the last value okay so let's so here i am trying to print okay what i am trying to print here exactly if i run this line what will be the output yeah friends okay this is a list okay let me take it as this is the a list so if i run this line line number 622 what will be the output here yeah print a list dot pop so i am applying pop function on a list so what will happen so one value will be removed okay so what is that one value will be maybe i am expecting this value because pop function if it do not mention anything about the position it will remove the last value. so here i am running it okay so then you can see print list it automatically that will remove the last option so but here i am giving the pop 2 okay that means i am mentioning the index value if i mention the index value so automatically it will look for the index value let's run it I'm running the same here now i am using print pop right so it is removing so 0 1 and 2 whatever whatever value that is there in the the one that will be removed. If I just see what I have in A list, yeah. the value that is there in the second position that is removed. Okay, so that is pop function. So based on the position, okay, based on the position, you are you are going to give a value. If you do not give any value, that will remove the last. So append is like if you uh, so directly it will add to the end. That's it. Okay, when you when you give any value, that will be added to the end. Okay. Uh, so next we have something called as insert okay insert a value using index if i want to insert a value so before we have seen something what is that we have seen uh, something like using index value i am using a list i am giving maybe 2 equal to uh, a comma b comma c comma d okay what is happening here in this case yeah. What is happening here? If I write this line, what is happening here? Yes, friends. If I am writing a list and I am providing two equal to some value. So what is happening? It? Yeah, try to try to type it and see what is happening. We are using replace. This is nothing but replace in place of the okay, whatever we have in the second position. So this will be replaced to this value. Okay, I am using the index value directly and I am doing it. Here I am trying to insert value. Okay, it's not replace. Okay, it is insert. Okay. So where I want to insert, I want into insert in the third position. Okay, so maybe 0, 1, 2, and 3 and 4. Okay. And what is the value? 2009 is the value. Let's run and see. Okay, let me run this. Okay, so insert. Okay, so if you observe, the so before we have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, now in the third position, 0, 1, 2, 3. Before we had ABC, now we have 2009. Hmm, exactly. Right? So that's the difference. So replace and insert, these are different things. Okay? Replace is a different thing, insert is a different thing. Yeah. Right? If I want to insert anything, I'm going to use insert and exactly I can provide the value wherever where it should be inserted. Okay, so if I do not give any value, I'm just, I'm just saying insert. Will it work? 
Yeah, friends, will it work? Right, insert expected two arguments. Okay, generally insert whenever we give, if we will give with two arguments. If I am if I am giving gamma, okay. If I give one, so there are two arguments. Argument number one, argument number two. Right. So insert function is expecting two arguments, but I gave only one argument. That is what my error is saying. Clear? Right. So I have given two arguments. If I run it, yes, it will run. Yeah. So in the same way, we have something called as extend. Okay, we have uh, append and extend. Okay, so you'll see what is the difference between append and extend. So let's first run append. Okay, and try to observe what is happening in the B list. Okay, I want I, I just want to append B list here into A list. A list dot append B list. Okay, so what is happening here in these lines? So here in output, line number 166, you can see this is A list and 67, it is B list. Okay, when I have when I have used append here, so we are getting the B list as a list here. As a list, it is it is added, and automatically, what happens in append, it will add to the end. So that is done. Now let's try to use extend here. Okay, a and b we have. Now when I'm using extend, you can observe the values that we have that will be splitted into different items. Automatically, that will be splitted into different items. You can see the difference here. So this is the output that I have got from append. Okay, and this is the output we have got from. So automatically, the list that we have added that is split into two different items. That's the major difference between append and next that we have to remember. Clear? Yeah, friends, are we clear? Yeah, do we have any doubts up to here? Yes, friends, are we clear with this? Do we have any doubts? What are the different functions we have seen up to now? In here, when it comes to list. Yeah, when it comes to list, what are the different functions we have seen? Mm -hmm. Append. Insert, pop, extend, exactly. Append, insert, pop, and extend. Okay. So what is append? Why do we use append? To add. So where it will be added? Can we add in the middle by using append? Add the elements at the end. Okay. So how insert works? Why do we use insert? Yeah, friends, why do we use insert? Mm -hmm. Inserting values at per particular index. Exactly. So when I am providing index, okay, I am providing, so uh, insert, we have to provide two arguments. Okay, one should be index value and the other should be the value that we are trying to meet. Okay, we are, we are, we are trying to insert. Okay. Uh, then what about the pop? Why do we use pop option? Remove, exactly. So pop, is for position. I can provide the position, specific position, and I can remove it. If I do not give any position, what will happen? If I don't provide any position or index, 
what will happen will it throw an error or i'll be getting the uh, yeah the last element will be popped exactly okay so what about the extend yeah what about the extend extend is also something similar to append but in append when i add two different list here so the list will be added as a list format okay, okay but in append but in extend it will be separated at different items okay in that way we are going to get our output. So are we clear up to this? Do you have any doubts? Yeah. Are we clear? Do we have any doubts? Okay. So if I want to reverse the list, okay, let me run. Yeah, I can do that. So if so, how we did how we did uh, how did we reverse a string? What we have done? Remember, we have used slicing. Yes or no? Yeah, we have used slicing, and we have given we have used reverse indexing. We have used two different columns, and we have given minus one. Yes, right. That automatically gave us the reverse. So here we have a function. Directly, I can use a function to reverse the whole string. Required. Okay. So then we have uh, something called as sort. Okay, we have a sort option here. So either I can sort ascending or descending. Okay, either I can either I can sort ascending or descending. So here we are uh, having list is equal to I'm creating value. Okay, I'm just using sort. Right, if I print the values here, so it's in the it is sorted. Okay, all the values are sorted. So the function I'm going to use is sort function. Okay. Uh, so by default, okay, if if we see here. So yeah, so that is the sort function we have. So what are we trying to do here? So we are trying to count values, okay. So count the value in given list of elements. So I want to count how many times we have one, two, three. So how many times we have? We have one time and second time, okay. So when I am running it, if I use count, yes, we have two times. That, is, that we can do. In the same way, I want to know what, where do where do we have Zara? What is the index value? So we have a function called as index. So when I run it, yeah. So that's the position, okay? Where we have the index position of Zara. So the arithmetic operators that we can apply, I can apply plus here, right? So I'm running it. So that's the value. So now I can use it for list also we haven't created list so these are the two different lists we have and i am running. so if i see what i have in list three these are the values 
okay one thing we need to remember list will take duplicates okay list will hold duplicate values also duplicates okay lists will uh, list will hold duplicates also it will not delete duplicates <coughs> So just if I want to multiply, okay, if I want to multiply and see, so those are the values. Right? So these are these are different arithmetical operators that can be that we can use, and these are applicable on the list here. Okay. So if I want to see what are the diff <coughs> different functions I have in list, I'm going to use something called as direct. Right. So we have seen append, we have seen count. Extend, index, insert, pop, remove, reverse, and sort. All, all these different functions we have seen. Right? So here we have the list. If you want to know what are the different functions we have, we can use. Okay, for example, I can also say <clears throat> NT if there is any. Yeah, you can see these are the different values we have in teacher. The same way I can go for float. Right. If I want to see what are the different functions we have in float, these are the functions. Right. We have str, right. string. So some some functions we have seen, like uh, uppercase. We have seen we have seen swap case. Uh, we have seen split. Right. Uh, what we have seen else? Lower case we have seen. Plain we have seen. Right. Then is numeric is lower. Is digit is decimal? All these we have to use. But there are many more. Okay. So what what you have to do is like you have to create a Excel sheet. First, take what what is what is the uh, if it is a string. Okay. In string, what are the different functions we have? So that is something you can do for your practice. Are we clear up to this? Do we have any doubts? So that is where we complete the list here. The, we have we have seen different functions that we have in list, and we have tried to apply. It. Are we clear? Do we have any doubts? No. Okay, let's take a break. And we'll come back by. Eleven ten.
Okay, friends. Welcome back to session again. <clears throat> so, uh, so up to now we have seen list, right? So we have, uh, so we have. If we recap again. So we are looking into data types, right? So when it comes to data types. We have numeric data type and we have sequential data types. <clears throat> okay, in sequential only, we are taking non numeric. Then we have Boolean, dictionary, and we have set. Right? These are the different data types that we have. In numeric, again, we have integer. Right. In numeric, again, we have integer, we have float, and we have complex number. Right. We have uh, integer, float, and complex number. Then in sequential, we have three types again. So we have seen already what is string is and what are the different functions we are going to use. Then we have list. Okay. Then we have list, and then we have tuple. So we have covered the integer part, float and complex. Now, now we know what is an integer is, what is float and what is complex and what are the different functions that are associated with all these different functions, so different data types. Now, from here, we have looked into string and list. So when it comes to sequential, so what, what do we mean by sequential? There will be certain order, right? they are ordered. Okay, how we can say they are ordered by using indexing. By using indexing, right? So it is ordered. So by using indexing, we can say it is ordered. Okay, so how does the indexing, uh, how do we have this indexing here? So indexing will start from zero. Always in Python, indexing will start from zero. And so this is one option. based on based on index, we can perform a many number of different operations. Because it is ordered, we know which element will be there at what particular position. So we can do many particular operations. So along with that, using indexing only, we have seen something called a slicing. Slicing is an operation. Right? We have seen slicing is an operation that we can do. Right? So we are, so how do we do slicing? So we take the values in square brackets along, along with the variable name. So we represent the indexes by using square brackets. Inside that square bracket, we use start, stop, and step. These are the three different indexes we are going to consider. And based on that, when it comes to start index, start index will always start with zero. Okay. Stop index will be taken. If you are not giving any value, it will take up to the end. Okay, these are the default values. You can change them. Okay. So by default, it will be zero. Okay. Step index will be always by default. It will be five. And with this, we have seen there are many different functions we can use. And when it comes to list here. Difference between list and tuple. Okay. If, I, if you see difference between list and tuple, list is immutable, tuple is immutable. Okay, that is something we have seen. Now we are looking into tuple. Okay, we have a data type that is called as tuple. So depending on the requirement, you are going to select all these data. Types. Okay, and you are going to use them. So when it comes to tuple here, tuple is, is same as a list. Okay, most, most of the features that we have in tuple will be similar to list. So with some difference. Okay, so the major difference that we can see is one is mutable and the other is immutable. Uh, excuse Okay, so we are looking into the data type that is tuple. So tuple is almost having similar features as list. Okay, when we when we look into it, so we'll have similar features as list. So what do we have in list here? List we have seen that list will be 
represented in square brackets okay and it is separated by different different okay it it contains it it is a container it contains different elements or items that are separated by commas and these elements that we have these elements could be of any data type that can hold any data type so these are certain features that we have seen so in the same way when it comes to tuple tuple will hold different data types items of different data types okay and we have parenthesis okay we can see okay the 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 symbol that we are seeing here the round brackets we call them as parenthesis okay, you can see here right so the tuple is represented by parenthesis so inside this so we will have different items or elements that are separated by commas okay different items or elements are that are separated by commas and these elements that we are taking these could be of any data type okay so that is something so now uh, the major difference that we have seen that is immutable right so the major difference is immutable so tuple is immutable once a tuple is created we cannot make any changes the tuple so why do we use what are the benefits okay, that is something important right so why why do we have as we are saying almost all these uh, features are same right the only only feature that we have seen is different is like mutability and immutability okay only only that is the difference we have seen so here when it comes to tuple tuples are faster than list okay when we when we take a tuple here tuples are faster than list okay tuples are faster than list if the user wants to protect the data from accidental changes that means uh, so there there is some data that is uh, that shouldn't be changed okay maybe maybe the only only certain uh, people the people with certain authority they can they can make those these changes so there will be there will be certain restrictions on the data right so in that condition if the user wants to protect the data from accidental changes a tuple can be used because once a tuple is created it cannot be edited clear right so we will see what are the different functions so tuples can be used as keys in dictionaries yes while list can be used we will see okay uh, when when it comes to dictionaries again we will be looking into why we have why we can do this so now uh, yeah here we are creating a tuple so you can see the difference between a list and a tuple so the representation is completely different here so when you have a tuple okay so here uh, we have parenthesis inside that parenthesis we have the values and yes we have different values okay we do not have a same data type we have different data i am creating two tuples here right so here i am creating an empty tuple in the same way we can create a empty list empty dictionary right so here i am creating a empty tuple that means we do not have anything nothing will be there it's an empty empty tuple so inside inside the tuple inside that parenthesis we do not have any elements now so creating a single tuple okay so yes we can you can see here if we type so i am asking what is the type here that is a tuple right if i see what do we have if i just run it yeah that's a value now i am creating a tuple here right i am trying to print the particular value so what do we have here we have what what do we have in zero we can do that because tuple is also ordered it has the indexing value okay again the indexing starts from zero right if i want to access this value so here i have 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 right so here i want to access only up to 5 1 to 5 yes we can do that right as we have done in case of list we can also use the slicing method here also. right so i'll be getting whatever values we have in that bit so along with that if i want to update a list okay so let's try to do it so tuple 1 we have created tuple 2 so now what what is one here yeah what is one yeah what is one here yeah 
Yeah, friends, what is one here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's the index value. One is nothing but the index value. So what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to provide the index value and I want to replace this 40. Is it possible? Yeah, is it possible to replace? No, exactly. Right? So that is not possible. So already a tuple is created. Right? Already a tuple is created. I cannot make changes into the stuff. So if I run it, that will throw you an error. It will clearly say that tuple, okay, object does not support item assignment. I cannot assign a different item into existing item. Clear? Okay. Now what do we have here? What is this? What is the data type of this? Yeah. What is data type of S? String. Yes. So what is the output here in the line number 738? Yeah. In line number 738, what is the, what will be the output? No. Once think once again. Yeah, that's correct. Up, up to that part is correct. Okay, we'll get S here. Here, next. Here, it will throw in error. Okay, if I, if I run it, yeah, same thing. So what is happening here? So we, we have seen that string is also immutable. Once if I have created a string, I cannot assign a value. So here in that particular position, I want to change yes to Z. Right, yes to Z. So that is not possible. Here, yeah? so string is also immutable. So to support that statement, we are trying to see this. Clear, right? Now, uh, I am trying to create a new tuple. So I want to add tuple one and tuple two. So running it, yeah, we can do that. Okay, whatever values have, we can add. Them. Okay. So I'm using an operator. So it's the same operator that we have used in list that also can be used here. So, but uh, here we are trying to count the values. So we have, we are taking tuple. So we are taking, we are getting a function from tuple here. I'm creating a function, I'm creating a tuple. So we already have tuple function, tuple dot index. So what is the index value? One. So if I want to print the value, that will, that will give me what is the index value of this. For example, if I have thousand, okay, I'm just running it. And if I want to know what is the index value of thousand, yes, I can know. Okay. Yeah. So in the same way, uh, tuple count two. So what I'm trying to count here, how many times we have count? So how many times we have two? Right? We have two times. So can count. So the same function that we have seen before, the count can also be used here. Index can also be used here. So now uh, we are using, uh, I'm creating a tuple here. Okay. Then I want to delete the given tuple. So we have a function called as delete. So now what will happen? Yeah, line number 759. What will happen here? Delete tuple. Mm -hmm. Will it will it will it be deleting the items in the tuple or it will delete the complete tuple? Okay, let me run. Okay, so I have used delete. There is no tuple there because it has already deleted. Right? It has already deleted. So delete function can be used in that. Okay. So if I want to see what I have in tuple, these are the different functions we have in tuple. Okay, you can notice that. So what are the functions we have? Count and index. That's it. Do you have append? No, append will not work here. Right? Because tuple is immutable. Only, only these functions will be working. But when you see before, when it comes to list, there will be many functions that are working. See, that's string. 
that is float that is integer yeah so these are all functions that we have that will be working on list but only two functions we have that will be working on count and index clear if i want to delete so i can so i can delete complete the Are we clear with that tuple? Do we have any doubts? Yes, friends. Okay. So next we have something called as sets. Okay. So when it comes to properties of sets, sets are unindexed, sets are unordered, uh, sets can be altered. Sets do not allow duplicates. So this is something important fact. When it comes to sets, sets do not allow duplicates. So what will allow duplicates? If I ask a question, list will allow duplicates. Tuple will also allow duplicates. Right? If I add two different tuples, the resultant tuple will contain duplicates. That's not an issue. But in case of sets, if I'm adding two different sets that contain something similar elements, so it will not take. Okay, so that is the property that we have, and we'll be looking into something called as frozen sets. So when when I apply frozen sets, so here we are saying sets are sets can be altered. So here it becomes sets cannot be altered. Okay, when when we change a set to frozen set, we cannot make any further changes. Okay, so let's look into. So when I take. Uh, sets here so sets will be enclosed in curly braces it also contains different items right which are separated by commas okay that's a basic structure of set i'm creating a normal set here okay uh, so i'm trying to print it so that's a set for us okay and here <clears throat> i am using a function here what is function i am using a set function and what do we have here what are these yeah what do we have in that set function exactly right that's a fun that's a list now what i am trying to do already there is a list okay now i want to convert that into set so i am trying to run if I see if I want to print it, yeah, right. So what is happening here? Here I can see it is A, B, C, F, but here it is C, A, B, F. Why? What is the reason? Why we have got, why we have got this output in this way? Can you say? Yeah, exactly, right. So when it comes to say, uh, when it comes to list, it is ordered. So when it comes to set, it is not ordered. So we'll get the result in that. Okay. So it is unordered. Set is unordered. There is no order here. Okay. Uh, so creating. Now add a duplicate value to the set. So no duplicates can be allowed. No duplicates are allowed in set. So that is something we can understand. So I'm using a function called as add and I'm trying to add D here. Let's run and see. So what is happening? It will not add. Okay, that it will not support it all. Okay, if there is a duplicate value, it will not support it all. Okay, so I'm creating a list here. So uh, now we are trying to convert. Okay, whatever list we have taken, we are trying to convert. So converting a list into set, yes, that is possible. So any 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 item to take. Okay, if you want to convert one item to another, uh, one data type to another data type, yes, we can do it. Okay, here in this case, I'm trying to convert list to set. Okay, so yeah, we are having the set here. 
So here we can see uh, operations on sets. There are two different sets I have taken. So set one, I'm trying to use something called as intersection. Okay, so what we are going to get here when, I, when we use intersection? Common elements, exactly. Right, so what are the common elements we have here? In set one and set two, if I, if I just run it, okay, if I see, yeah, only one common element we have. Right, only one common element we have, that is one, okay? So that is called as intersection. So this is a specific function we use when we have set here. Okay, in the same way we are looking into, right? So when we have list, there are uh, there are certain set of functions we have, right? In the same way, when it comes to uh, set, we have certain specific functions. Okay. So here we have uh, some, uh, we are trying to find common elements of set and list here. Okay. So I have a list. Okay. So intersection as list. Okay. I'm taking list is the function inside that we have given these values. So whatever result we are getting that I am trying to copy here and I'm trying to convert that. Okay. If I print, right. So just, I have taken this value and I have converted that into list. If I want to get okay, the conversions we can do. Right. So I, I can convert set into list or list into set that we can do. So the same thing that we are trying to do. And intersection can be also represented by and symbol. Okay. So in place of intersection, I can use and symbol. Okay. So here. So when we look into set three, we have. Okay, so that's the intersection. So I can use in place of intersection, I can use and also. Okay, that can be done. Uh, along with that, we have something called as union. So in case of union, so here, what will happen? What will be the output? If I'm taking set one and set two, if I'm taking union, what will happen? What will be the output? Print all elements okay set one and set two it will print all elements so total i'll be getting six i have three elements here three elements here so will i be getting six elements is it possible one two three nine zero exactly yeah right yes so uh that's a union okay the uh, apart from common elements okay the common elements will be removed and apart from that we will be getting the union value so I can also use the symbol, union symbol to get the value. Okay, here I'm using union here. Uh, let us take set one and set two and let's find a common set, okay, common values between them. Uh, first I need to run this, okay. And I'm trying to print those values. Exactly. So it will not take two tickets, okay. One thing we need to remember here, sets will not take two tickets. That's something important we need to understand. Okay, so yeah. so there we have used uh, and symbol, right? So we can use the symbol here that can be applied as union. Okay, this is a union symbol that we can use here. So that can be applied in place of okay, if I am trying to print the value. So that's the value here. Yeah. So we have intersection and union. These are the two different values. Okay. These are the two different specific functions that we have when we are working on sets. Uh, so here we are creating union uh, of three sets here. Okay. Uh, then I'm trying to uni uh, set one, union set two and set three. Okay. I'm trying to combine. Okay. So what do we have here? Set one we have, set two and set three. We are trying to find the common elements that we have here. That is set one, set two and set three. What do we have? Okay. So the common elements that we have, that will be removed between these three different sets and remaining whatever we have, that will be given as the final set. Okay. So I can use these symbols. Okay. These symbols to be remembered. We can use these symbols when we are working on a set.
So yeah, uh, difference between set three and set four. So before we have seen when it comes to list and tuple, we can use plus, right? So in the same way, when it comes to list, I can use asterisk also. I can multiply list one into three. I will be getting some values, right? But here I can use minus. Okay, I can I can use minus here. Uh, so let me take these values from starting. Okay, so let me run print option. Okay, now I am taking set five, set three minus set. Okay, set three what we have here. Uh, set three we have taken set one and set two union. Set one and set two union. That means what are the values we are going to get in set one and set two? Okay, so this output, yeah. These are the two different sets, right? So what we are, what we are going to get? So I'll be getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the three will not be repeated. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, only these values, right? Only first set. Mm, yeah, exactly. So when I take set one and set two, in this case, what we are going to get? I'll be getting only second value, right? What are the common elements, right? Now, what we are trying to do, I'm trying to subtract these two. Right, we are trying to subtract set three minus set four. Uh, so we should be getting the only first two elements. Okay, so where we have printed it. Yeah. Right, we'll be getting only first two elements, one and two. Clear? Yeah, are we clear up to this? Line number 859, do we have any doubts? Yes, everybody. Okay. So uh, finally, we have one more function that is called as is disjoint. Okay. So uh, check if set four and set five are disjoint sets. Okay, let's try to see what we are going to get here. So if I am saying set four is disjoint, print this value. Okay. If I just only run this. Yeah, it's true. Okay, so what we have in set five and set four, they're not, okay, there is no matching. Okay, if you observe, Okay, if I'm if I'm getting set four here, I'll be getting only set, these values, right? And set five, I'll be getting only one two. So these both are disjoint sets. There is no relation, right? If I had if if I add something like two here, so obviously the result will be false. Are you getting it? Okay. So here we are looking into two aspects here. <clears throat> uh, when I'm looking into disjoint, I'm seeing whether there is any common element. Okay set four I have taken and set five I have taken. So in set four, you can see we have three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. In set five, I have only one and two. So there is no common element. in between. So these are disjoint sets. They're not joint sets. So obviously when I'm using if condition here, or I'm directly when I'm using this condition here, that will be giving me answer in two or things. Is it true or false? Is disjoint? Is it true or false? That is something we are trying to get. Okay, so that is disjoint. So what are the different functions we have seen here? We have seen intersection, right? So we have seen union. Intersection is represented by and symbol. We have union, right? So it's like or symbol we have union and or. Then we have seen disjoint. Right? These are the different functions that are associated with sets. Right? When we are working on sets. Clear? Yeah. Right? So finally, we have a function called as clear. If I if I write set phi dot clear, okay. So let's see what will be the result. I'm saying set phi and clear. Uh, what will be the output? Yeah. Can you say? 
can we clear the items that are present in a list can we do that yes right so it will it will remove all the values yes right it is given here so it is it will remove all the values so when i run it okay now if i just want to print set 5 what will be the output yeah friend if i just run set 5 if i print set 5 what will be the output yes it will be an empty set yes or no right when we when we run it exactly it will be an empty set because there are no values we have cleared all the values that we have there so we have already cleared clear right so yes what whatever okay here here i am using a print statement uh, which says that what is the output so finally we have something called as frozen set okay so so we we have already we have already proven that, proven that sets are mutable that means we can clear those items okay so sets are mutable here i can clear those items but if i want to make it immutable okay once created set if i don't want to change it okay if i want to keep it as it is so then i am going to convert that into frozen set frozen set is just an immutable version of a python set object okay so while elements of a set can be modified at any time elements of the frozen set remains the same after creation right so let's try to create a set here mm, what are we creating here is it a set yeah what are we creating what is what is oval says set tuple exactly right we have parentheses and the values so we are creating a tuple here okay now this tuple i am trying to convert into frozen set that is a set okay ultimately that is a set here so i am trying to convert it into frozen set here so we have a function called as frozen set so when i run it and if i see to print the frozen set so you can see that these are the values right these, these are the these are the set that we have created here okay so if i want to create an empty frozen set yes that's an empty frozen set we have now i want to add b okay can we do that yeah can i can i add b yes or no no exactly that is immutable okay uh, let's use a clear function can we can we use clear function yes set dot clear no. right i cannot clear also no. yes right if i want to see what are the different functions that we have in set yes we can do that I want to see how a set function will work. That also I can do that. Okay, see, we, here, you, here I am using help. Help is a function that will give you more details about the set. You can see here, this is a new empty set object. And what you can do with this, all, all, all these are, this is the documentation that you can see here, given by. Okay, you can, you can look into all these documentation. So what are the different functions? So we used we have used intersection. So we have used disjoint, right? So in the same way, these are the different functions we are going to have. We have seen add function also. We have seen clear function. Are we clear? Do we have any doubts? Hmm? Yeah. So we have seen up to sets here. Uh, so we have one more data type that is uh, mappings or dictionaries. Okay. So dictionaries, what are the properties? So when it comes to dictionary, there is a specific structure that we have seen, right? So these are represented in 
square brackets. These are represented in square brackets. We have a key and value pair, right? So, so there is a specific uh, structure that we have here. He is key and value pair. Okay, so we'll have a key, we'll have a value. And these are separated by comma, right? So that is the basic structure we are going to see here. And when it comes to key, okay, when, when it comes to key here, key cannot be changed. Once we create a key, that is, that will be there. But values can be changed. Right? Values can be changed, values can be added. That means we can say values are mutable. Okay, we can we can make changes to values, but we cannot make changes to this. Okay. And we do not have indexing here. Right? When we are working here, we generally say it as unordered because we do not have indexing here. So if I want to access into any value, I should be using only key. Okay, only through key I can access into any value. So if I want to change, if I want to remove, if I want to add anything, we can do by using key, right? So uh, dictionaries are unordered key value pairs, right? Keys are immutable, as I said before, keys are immutable, whereas the values are immutable. We can change values. So how we are going to do access here by using key. Okay. So dictionary is created by using curly braces. Right. We have we have curly brackets. So that represents dictionary. So dictionaries are accessed via keys and not via their position. So a dictionary is an associative array. Okay. Dictionary is an associative array. Any key of the dictionary is associated to the value. So if I take key and value, so for example, if I take name, right? if I take name here, so name will be associated so to some value, right? So name is associated to some value, okay? So the values of dictionary can be of any type, okay? When I'm taking uh, values here, value could be a string, could be a numerical value, could be a float, Again, it could be a dictionary also. So we may have a dictionary inside a dictionary. This is also possible. Okay. So we call it as nested dictionary. So that is so that is also we have. Right. Let's look into some examples so that it will be more clear when we are working on it. So here we are trying to create a dictionary. You can observe the syntax here. So the curly braces that we have, okay, and these are the different items, okay, these are the different items that we have here, and inside, so we here on my left side, we have a key, on my right side, we have a value. So these two are separated by column, and different key value pairs are separated by commas, okay, different values are separated by commas. Okay, so that is, that is the value we have. Okay. So now I want to know what I have in this particular key, right? What is the key here? Key is name, right? In this key, what is the value we have? So before what we have done in, in place of name, we have given index value, right? Zero, one, two, when we are working on our uh, list, right? But here it is not possible. So what we are going to view, we are going to give the key value, key. Okay, we are going to provide the key, uh, and using key we get the value. What is the value we have? So when I run it, that's shut. Right. So in the same way, if I want to see what I have in age, yes, we have age. So that's the dictionary we are creating here. Okay, and I want to make an update to existing entry. So what is the existing entry? The existing entry is eight. So now I want to change that eight to nine. Right? Yes, we can do that. Right? So when I, when I look into the dictionary again, so when I just print the dictionary again, yeah, that's the update. Right? So before it is eight, now we have changed it to nine. 
right? In the same way, I want to change school, right? If I want to change the school, yes, I can do that, right? If I want to change uh, the salary. Now, in this case, we are trying to create a new entry, right? Where we, are, where we are trying to create a new entry, already we have a dictionary one, okay? Already we have, these are the different keys we have, name, age, and bike are the different keys we have, right? So along with that, I want to add something else. So what I want to add, I want to add school. Yes, right? So when I enter, when I see what I have in dictionary, yeah, now school is added, right? In the same way, I can add a new entry. So I have to add a key, I have to add a value. Both we need to add. Okay, I'm adding sad. Right, again, if I check what we have, Right, so I can I can print individually. Right, if I by if I am printing age, if I am saying age here, so it will print what is the value that is present. If I am printing school, what is the value? Salary, what is the value? So we are going to access these values by using different uh, keys here. Right, so we have different functions here. We have keys, values, and items. So if I want to access into, if I want to know what are the keys we have, directly I can use a function called as keys. Just I'm going to run it. Right? We can see what are the values we have. So this, this is the function we have for values and this is the function we have for items. Okay? So when I say items, you can see the output here. So what we have here? So I am getting different tuples. Right, the values are getting in the format of different tuples that are present again in a list, a list containing different tuples. You can see. Okay, uh, so that is something we have with uh, these functions. Okay, these functions are important. Keys, values, items. These functions are important when we are trying to deal something related to digital. These are very specific to digital. Uh, then we have, okay, let's create, if I want to de delete a dictionary, right? If I want to delete a dictionary, so we have something called as delete option. We have a delete function. We have used the delete function before all, right? So if I delete it, I am completely deleting, deleting. Right? So I have deleted this particular. So individually, I can I can delete a key here. Okay, in this case, if you are working, if I if I provide the key value. So before what happened? So where we have used to delete, delete, remember? When we are using tuple, I guess, right? When we are using tuple, yeah, exactly, right? When we have used tuple, so when I have deleted it, completely the tuple has deleted. So there is no tuple there. So when I'm when I'm again trying to run it, it said that there is no tuple there. It is already deleted. So here. I am only deleting one key. Okay, so that I can do by using delete function. Right? If I see, that's the result. Only these these are present. So if I use clear, yes, I can use clear also. Nothing. I do not have nothing. Everything's deleted. So if I give only the dictionary, I can delete entire dictionary. Clear. So I can, if I want, I can remove a key that is present in a dictionary. If I want to clear the whole dictionary, yes, we have a clear function. And if I want to delete complete dictionary, okay, I do not want the dictionary. Yes, I can do that by using dictionary. Just I'm going to give the dictionary name. Clear, right? So once dictionary is deleted, the object does not exist. Okay, it will not there. Okay, if I want to see again, so nothing will be there. It says that dictionary one is not defined at all. So that is something. So here again, uh, we are trying to create a dictionary. Inside a dictionary, we are creating one more dictionary here. So what is the key here? Key is K3. And in place of value, again, I am taking a dictionary. If you see here, inside key, okay, that is a key value and 100 is a value. So now, uh, I am trying to access into these values. Let's see what we can do. So I am printing D here. Let me run this. Okay. And I am printing D. 
So these are the values key one, key two, key three. Okay. And these are the values. In the, so here we have a list in the K2. In K3, we have a list. Okay. So now I want to know what I have in K1. Yes, I can do that. So in K2, I can run it. Right. So in uh, in K2, again, we have a list, right? List is sequential. Again, it, it will have uh, order. So I can provide a value. I can provide a uh, index value and based on that I can get a value. If you see, I am giving one. So what will be the output here for line uh, for line number nine sixty one? Yeah. Mm, where do we have nine? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Mm. Yes, exactly. Right. In the same way, I can print. Okay. Now you can see clearly how the axis is happening, right? So in case of list, I have given the index value. In case of dictionary, I'm going to give the key value. If I give the key value, I'm going to get the, right? So that is how we can uh, apply. Okay, we can, we can use a dictionary. Okay, so these are different functions. Whenever we require, when whenever we are writing on some logic, okay? Depending on the logic, we are going to use different data types. And based on the data type you are using, these are the different options here. So we need to, we need to understand what are the basics that we have here. And while we are implementing them, so it should be, it, we should follow all these syntax, whatever we have seen. And there are certain functions that are associated with each and every data type. Okay. So we'll be using them and we are going to Okay, it's 11.55 here. Okay, let's wind up the session. Okay, we're almost uh, done. Uh, if you have any further questions, you can ask. Me. Yeah, do you have any questions? If you have any further questions, you can ask me. Mm. Already we have uh, given this file. This file com contains complete notes. Okay, we have given all these uh, notes and bookmarks and everything here. Uh, so apart from that, you will be having slides that are already provided to you. Okay. So apart from the, what notes you do you require? Shiva. This will be the notes. Okay. And most of the things will be available online. Uh, so we can get some information from that also. Okay. But most of the notes has been provided here. When we have created these files, uh, so we, we made sure that each and every point has to be there. So it will be easy to understand when you are going to run the program. Okay. Yeah, that is already there, right? This Python file is already present. Right? In your LMS, you have downloaded that file from your LMS. Okay. Okay. So here. Now we are working on data types, variables, and operators. So I have opened the study material. In study material, we have Python. Same code I have downloaded and I have worked on. Okay. So you can also do the same thing. So please download the Python code and you can start working on it. Please try to run the code once before tomorrow, tomorrow's class. Everybody has to run the code once. Yeah, clear. Am I clear? Okay, once again, uh, just want to remind. Okay, so this is our channel. Okay, 360 Digital G, which channel you can find a lot of 
videos, shorts, live uh, playlists are available. Okay, you can get into it. You can learn a lot of things. Okay, it's open source. We have like uh, data science animated videos we have. Okay, and many webinars will be going on continuously every week. Okay, so whenever they are happening, it will be intimated to you. To get the notification, you have to subscribe. Okay, everybody, please try to subscribe uh, this channel. Thank you. Okay, if you do not have any further questions, okay, uh, we shall wind up for today. We'll uh, meet.